Welcome to the Tracks Group Exchange. I'm your host, Kieran Stewart. We are live. You wouldn't have thought it about 20 seconds ago when we were deep in discussion about McDonald's. Um, <laughs> yes, we were chatting about McDonald's. Totally forgot to press the go live button. And uh, yeah, the show nearly started without me. But it's all good. And tonight we are joined by Manchester United's Class of 92 defender, Pat McGibbon. How are you doing, Pat? I'm great, Steve. Go how are you? All right. Oh, you all right, right, Pat? You all right, Pat? Hey, Pat. Join us, mate. Oh. <laughs> all right. All right, let's get the show started. Um, we're, Pat, we're going to have a little chat about how Man United got on today. Um, I'm sure, sure I'm sure you don't mind being a part of that as well. Um, so, Nathan, Man United, Chelsea today. People are criticising Man United. The fact they, they, uh, again, they haven't beat a team in the top six. Um, how important is that, and and how and 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 how was the how was the game today? Nil nil um, against Chelsea. A very t- uh, very yeah. Chelsea in, in, in pretty good form. Yeah, it was nil nil. But you know, in the end of the day, we played a good Chelsea side. Uh, two two goals made them very difficult to break down. Now, um, and the thing is for us is where we we are where we are. Like I've said before many times, this is where we're at at the minute. We, we need to obviously strengthen in a few areas to become that elite team. In the Premiership to get you know to, to get in touch with Man City, and um, until we do that, it's going to be very difficult to, to win games against the big you know the big teams like the Chelsea, Liverpool, and um, and Cities. So today, you know, it's not nice. Obviously, you want to see goals and you want to see much, uh, stuff going on, but you got to realise where you're at at the moment, and that's where Solskjaer knows he's at. He knows what he's got in his squad, and he knows that that's the way you got to go about the game to get something out of it. And to be fair, we should have got a penalty anyway. I don't care what anybody says. That touched his hand and it touched... It just, there's nothing more to it. It touched his hand. Yeah. And no yeah. So, it's a penalty. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't quite understand that. It seemed it seemed as the... Uh, it looked like it might have hit Mason Greenwood's arm, but, but it seems like they, they knew it hit Callum Hudson-Odoi's arm, but it's, they're saying it's an accident. So... But again, still, it seems like the rules are changing week. But exactly, it seems like the rules are changing week by week, which is why they brought in that if it hits underneath the sleeve, then it's a pat handball. I, I don't know. It, it, it changes all the time, and, and, that, well, and that's the problem. <laughs> it was his finger. Oh, his finger. Time, so well, percent below the sleeve. This is what I mean. So, so I, I don't understand why it wasn't a penalty. But, but as you said, a very tough Chelsea team, a well-drilled Chelsea team under Tuchel, and 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 not a bad and not a bad point. Um, no. No. So, so, Pat, um, how how important do you think it is for Man United to 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 start getting points against the top six? Um, and there's been a lot of criticism recently about them not doing that. Is it is it is it that important, or is it, is it the other games that they should be winning as well? Yeah, look, I, th- I think it's I think it's a combination of both. And as Nathan just mentioned earlier, um, I think what you can see is that there's. It's about progression, you know, with with, with Ali in particular, and building building the squad. It's not it's not going to happen overnight. Um, I think you know with, with the successful teams, and, and obviously in ninety two to ninety seven when I was about, you, you know, there was there was an awful lot of, you know, it was a successful side during that time. But um, when it came to it, you know, the, the, it was the same in, in Sir Alex's time. You know, they, they built the squad, and I think that's what Ali's doing. So, in the grand scheme of things, of course, you know. I mean, we want to be seeing them beating the team from the top six, but I, I think Ollie's doing doing a great job. And as long as he continues to get that time, you know, which is not something that that happens a lot within the Premiership. Yeah, then, exactly. you know, I, I think I think it will happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Nathan, you saw uh, Man United uh, get uh, an, a draw in the week in in, in the Europa League. Um, they're through to the next round. Was it really important to, to, to get the win there? Or was it just 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 a tidy performance? Um, so obviously against Sociedad Dad you're talking about, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I just I just felt like uh I was wondering why he didn't, you know, play a, a few of the other lads really on that game. Because we was up mm-hmm. by so many goals. We could have saved the legs of a few players, I would have I would have thought. And um let Ahmed have more of a you know, more minutes. I wouldn't I would have loved to have seen him because I just want to see him play and 
you know, and, and let a few others play. And we, we, it would have been very, very, you know, difficult job for them to beat us four 0 or even five 0 to be able to mm-hmm. go through. So I just felt like you know it's a game where it's kind of we really didn't even play that well either. So it was it was a it's a game where we just wanted to let the ninety minutes run out really and um, and just like get past that game so we can come to the Chelsea game. So. To me, I was a little bit puzzled, like I said. It's, it's, but again, we, we made it through. We're through to the next round and nobody got injured. So, um, you know, you, you're quite happy. But it's been two games, really, where not really enjoyed it so much, if you get what I mean. It's other games, you come off, you see, you know, you're smiling, you're excited, but not many goal, no goals and not many chances either. So it's kind of a boring week to forget and just say, right, we've got a point. We got through to the next round. Right, let's see what happens next time. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just you want to see some excitement. And that's what Ahmed has in him. Um, obviously, not sure that he can start games yet, but I'd like to see him come off the bench 10 minutes, 20 minutes every now and again, just to give us a little bit of spark, something else that we need. So Yeah. yeah. Do you think that the Leipzig game pre- in the in the Champions League played a part in that, in, in his mindset in not picking a, a different team? Yeah, probably, yeah. Because we obviously got totally destroyed at, at away. Um, and we destroyed them at home. So he probably thought, you know what, if I kind of let off a little bit, we, we could get turned over. And, you know, in a in a time where, you know, one loss, the manager gets under pressure quick and then they're talking yeah. about him leaving, like, you know, within one game. So yeah. it makes sense that he has to do what he has to do now. And and again, so you, the, it's funny you mentioned that. So he, he has to do that. With the squad that we have, that's why we have to play the Fred and McTominay in there. That's why we can't let loose another um, attacking midfielder in there. We have to do that to make sure we don't let those goals in and then make sure we stand a chance of winning or drawing those big games. When mm-hmm. it comes to the smaller games, so, you know, the, the team's not as high up, I should say. Um, that's when you, you end up with us pushing forward a bit more, playing that extra attacking midfielder. And that's, um, like I said, if we have Bailly in the side, we can afford to do that. Without Bailly in there, we can't really afford to do that. Yeah. Um, and Pat, Man United have got uh, AC Milan in the next round of the Europa League. Uh, Paul Scholes seems to think that they could absolutely breeze past them and, and win the competition. Do you, do you think it'll be that easy? <laughs> like, like, you know, I'd look at the way, with Scholes, he sometimes thinks they're our tongue in cheek as well, you know. The thing about it is, and, and you know, even just, I, I just love listening to this now and then hearing about, you know, the young kids that are coming through. Because, you know, when, uh, as much as obviously we want Manchester United to, to be winning trophies and winning Premier Leagues, you know, to actually do it and, and see young lads being. You know, I suppose blood at the, the, the same time, you know, mm-hmm. is, is hugely important. So, in terms of the games against the likes of Milan and that, we know they're gonna they're gonna be difficult games. These are these are tough teams, um, mm-hmm. and regardless of you know even how how they're getting on, um, you know, just at a, at a local level, just within their leagues and, and that that side of things, it takes care of itself when you when you're a big name. There's there's no easy games. You know, there's no easy yeah. games. But the one thing I wouldn't say is, you know, it, it's just great to see that progression and also to see the kids come in as well because it is a it's a squad game now. You know, and and let seeing the, the young lads get a chance, but also obviously having that experience around as well. Um, you know, it certainly um, it can happen. It can happen. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's no easy games within Europe. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was funny when I saw it because it was almost like he was insulted that he was questioning whether Man United could win the Europa League. It was like, <laughs> of course they can. Like, what we did. It's like Robbie Savage was so confused by it as well. It was, it was funny. It was funny. Um, so, so Nathan, you think that? Would you, would you think about the draw against AC Milan? A tough one. Yeah, or you it's get through that one. Tough. Whatever well, you play, it's going to be a tough game, especially if mm-hmm. you've got Zlatan coming back as well. So. You know, you know what he can do. No matter how old he is, he's still going to be a tough guy. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so we just got to be careful about that and make sure we get get ahead. Get ahead. So when he does score his goal, or whenever he, does, I think he'll get probably get a goal sometime somewhere. So we're going to need to have a few goals in us. So I think we got enough to do that because they're not um, obviously as dominant as they used to be back in the day. Mm-hmm. So um, with that being said, I think we got enough to beat them. That's for sure, and we got enough to win it. But again, the only teams that really scare, not scare me, but make me feel like, you know, 
they're, they're the ones we're going to have to really roll our sleeves up against. As if we play like a Tottenham or something, you know, if they still keep getting through and we get through, they're the team. You know, you don't want to play Jose. We're going to, I think we, I mean, we got Jose in the other cup anyway, so um, <laughs> I don't want to play Jose again. I just want to you know how he's going to set up. You know how he's going to set up. It's going to be difficult to get past and then try and hit you on the counter. And it'll be horrible. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. Exactly. All right, all right. No, it's not after the last beating we got as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right, before we go on, please, please hit the like and subscribe button. Um, go and follow these guys on, on Twitter. And, uh, yep, yeah, it's time, it's time to get a history lesson. How are you doing, Pat? Are you good? Yeah, look, I'm good, yeah. Um, all right, all right. Yeah, it's, it's trying, trying to get through this last time, but all good. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a struggle, but we're getting there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there, people. Oh. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We're, we're going to mm. get there. All right, all right, Pat. You started your uh, career at Portdown in Northern Ireland. Um, how, how was it? You were spotted by Man United there. Yeah, well, I I joined Portdown about fifteen, almost sixteen. So at that stage, um, probably until I was seventeen, I was I was. <clears throat> probably considered a little bit too small to, to be a centre back but I grew nice. in between 17 and 18 from about 5 foot 6 to near 6 foot 2 and all of a sudden you know there was a few scouts were watching games and that so um, didn't know anything about um, it was Eddie Coulter was a chief scout at, at Manchester United at the time didn't know that Eddie was coming to the game had actually been due to go to Port Vale three weeks before that on trial and it fell through um, but then I actually played a reserve game, and after the reserve game, was called in the the office of Porta Down, and and the the chief scout from from Belfast, Eddie Coulter, um, was there and, and said that I was going over on trial for a week to Manchester United. So obviously, I was you know delighted. Absolutely buzzing, I bet. And how, and how was that when you got down to Carrington? Was that was that uh, a, like like heaven? I bet how was it? Yeah, when when I got over, did you say sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I I went over for the week, and the, the, like I was used to playing reserve team football at Portadown. I was on the on the fringes of the first team, but um, all of a sudden I went over thinking I was going to be playing um, uh, an an eighteen game at United, and was pushed straight into a reserve team game at Old Trafford. So um, we had the, I was actually Aston Villa that we played, and and I was marking White York. And oh, Dalian, Dalian <laughs> oh rest, quality! You know, so so it was a bat baptism of fire, and then I, I was put in there. Obviously, was deemed if that well enough to be invited over. Then in that July for another three weeks, and after that three week trial, then they signed me. So was offered a three year deal. So you know, well, I was never going to turn that down. And 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 how was how was uh, how good was Dwight York at that time? Yeah, look, there were there were two quality players, you know, uh, dealing with dealing with yeah, I remember Dalian Yeah, Dwight just you know he he could do things. You could just see that that bit of genius about him, you know. And um, so like, look, it, it was it wasn't an easy game to be thrown. <laughs> yeah, look, I must have, I must have you did well enough to get his contract, though, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, quality, quality. And 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 when you got to Carrington. Um, how 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 much different was it to 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 life at Portadown? It must have been a massive massive change. Yeah, well, you see, Carrington at that stage hadn't hadn't developed. So when I first went over, we had had Littleton Road and, and the Cliff training ground. So okay, um, the the Cliff. I remember going in the the first morning and and going to training and remember looking and seeing Brian Robson, who was England captain at the time and. All I had ever seen was was him in, in shoot magazine and match magazine. And all <laughs> yeah. So all match. of a sudden, you know, you were going out and training with these people. So, um, so it was oh, it was amazing, you know. And and um, but then again, once once you get into that environment again, if if you want to make it as a professional footballer, then you have to to see it as what it is, which is mm -hmm. you get out and you train as hard as they do. Yeah, yeah. You know? And 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 and. How how good were were some of the players in in your team? I think there was uh, Keith Gillespie, 
um, Nicky Butt was, was in your team, wasn't he? How good was that team at yeah, the they, time? Those lads would have, would have been a year younger than me, and that they, okay. that, that new team. So Giggsy would have been the same age as myself, lad, Simon Davis, um, Kevin Pilkin, and the goalkeeper. They were all. Oh, yeah. Kev Pilkin. Yeah. I had a play in, in both the team and the was he team with, in? Was with all of those lads, you know, so obviously Bobby, you know, Scolesy, Keith Gillespie, Robbie Savage, as you mentioned, like Sav was in that team. Um, and the, the, throughout it, the two novels, you could go through it all. Ben, ben Thornley was an absolutely top player as a, as a player before he got injured. Um, so you could go through them all. I mean, I have to say, as, as Paul Scholes, Scholes, he was just something else. You know, it was only when you played with him that you realised just how good a player Paul Scholes was. You know? did, did you play with him when he was playing up front then? Because I'm, I remember when he came through, he, he, used to, he started to play up front, didn't he? And then he, and then he dropped back like soon after yeah yeah i mean he, he 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 was even when he played up front i mean i always said this the, the two best finishers i ever seen were, were paul scholes and, and ali gonosalski are like ali when he came over as well and yeah. um but but schools he obviously dropped back nathan, nathan as he went on then um yeah. and, and dropped into midfield and I think in his early his early career when he dropped in the midfield, he scored quite a few goals from you know from arriving in the box late. He scored with yeah. headers and that, and he's not a big lad, but he, he you know he was he was really good at, at timing of his runs as well. <coughs> Quality. Um, the, the, I... the way I the way I explain Paul Scholes, I, I, if you watch if you watch the film The Matrix, when when everything is <laughs> down and he's in the as normal, that, that just about sums up school, yeah. Like he sees it in a different, di- yeah. different dimensions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, oh. yeah it is, it is. Uh, um, and uh, when you was growing up, who who was your biggest influences as players? Who did you who did you look up to? Oh, I mean, I, I um, I'm just trying to think. You see, believe it or not, when I was growing up, and I, I mean, I've mentioned this before, as I actually Liverpool is supportive, believe it or not, growing up. <laughs> I, there was, I know, I know, there was, uh, but the way I explain this, I, I always say it's like it's like having a uh, rump steak and then realizing you, once you taste sirloin. So I always like the last couple of minutes say that, you know, once I got the Crawford, there was no turn back, you know, that was yeah, yeah. So, um, so you had, like, as I said, I, I just was, had a big interest in, in football generally, you know, mm-hmm. so when, it, you know, Alan Hansen was a quality player at the time, I suppose he was a defender as well, mm-hmm. um, you know, but as I said, Brian Robson was, was huge. I mean, when, when I walked through the doors at the, the cliff and, seen somebody who was English captain and, and Ro- Robbo, Robbo that time or that first year that I went over he was sort of he was in and out of the first team because you know with injuries and he was coming to the, that stage of his career but mm-hmm. he would have tre- he would have played with the reserves and played with the, the A team and oh, I tell you what you see that actually playing the same side as when you know in A team games reserve team games it was a privilege because you always knew that if there was anything going to kick off that Rabo would sort it out and that's it. He weren't short. He weren't short of uh, players that could could handle themselves as well. I mean, you had Roy Keane in your team as well, and uh, Steve Bruce, Gary yeah. Pallister. They were all they were all put it about. So <laughs> Eric Cantner, like, Eric, Eric Cantner. <laughs> you played, yeah. So you would have been played with Eric Cantner and um, uh, Mark Hughes as well at, at the times so that you got there. How right. how yeah, McClare. How yeah. good were they? Brian McClare. Yeah, oh. look, 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 you you go through you go through it all, you know, between Chucky, between Sparky, all all of that group. You know, Keno, funny enough, was over in two thousand and sixteen, just as as part of you know the the charity fundraiser that I, I ran with, with trying to be smart and. and he, Kino said that you know actually in the Q and A said you know training was actually harder than the games because mm-hmm. everybody they didn't leave anything on the pitch. They just <laughs> one side of each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they try not to do that now. Mm. They try not to do that now. Um, and 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 you made your debut for Man United in in, in the cup against York um, uh, in a, in a, in a three deal defeat. 
mind you. Yeah, that, 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 sorry, but that penalty. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that penalty uh, was never a penalty. It was about five, about five <laughs> yards outside the area. And if anyone sees this, please go and have a look. It is miles <laughs> outside the area. I had to double take. I couldn't believe it. And it was David Ellery, and he was like regarded as like <laughs> the best at the time as well. Yeah, David yeah. Ellery, he's, he's, he's head, a, yeah, school teacher, Arsenal yeah. fan. He, he he was he was the best. And giving her a penalty like five yards outside the area mm. is crazy. Yeah, that question well, was I, banned, I think, at one point. But, 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 but what I wanted to ask is, um, <laughs> how, 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 how did you deal with that? Because as of such a young age, it must have been quite hard to, to have to deal with the, the situation. Yeah, look, it, it was difficult because, you know, obviously you're, you're, you're making your debut and it's, you know, at a, at a club like Manchester United, everything's scrutinised anyway. So, um, but the... the, the I've, I've spoken about this before, you know, I tried that myself and Polly have never actually played in the same team together, you know, and, and what you do is with, with centre-half partnerships in particular, and I suppose the same with Nathan with, with centre-forward partnerships, you know, sometimes it clicks and sometimes it takes a while to develop, so usually with centre, mm-hmm. central defensive partnerships, we tried to play offside that particular night, ball was played over the top, linesman didn't put the flag up and then had to chase back, so um, obviously they give give a penalty and, and I got sent off. So it was obviously demoralising, you know, your debut. But um and you know, after the game we got into the changing rooms and the and the gaffer, you know, which he's well entitled to do, give everybody a bit of a rollicking and yourself a bit of a rollicking. That's that's what happens as part of elite level sport at times, you know, it's mm-hmm. you're you're in a, a difficult environment. But I always remember the next the next morning because I went in as soon as I got into the chain or into the, the training ground at the cliff, um, he called me up. The gaffer called me up and he says, Look, son, he says, um, Look, these, these things happen, they're part and parcel of football. You, you, you know, yeah, it's how you react to it. And he says, You know, but when I think of it now, you know, maybe should have played Brucey with you because he maybe speaks a wee bit more than what, mm-hmm. what Pally did. Yeah. Now, he didn't need to say that. And it was probably, you know, Kidology as well. He, he was just mm-hmm. trying to look after the, the young kids. Uh-huh. You know, so so after after that, then we went out to training, and and you know what, all the lads, you know, Brucey, all all the first team lads, you know, you just had a bit of banter about it because you have to mm. move on from it yeah. very quickly, and that's part and parcel of mm. football, I suppose. Did yeah, you get? It's... Did you get? Did you get on well with Alex Pat? Yeah, look, and uh, Gaffer was great. You know, it, some people talk about the the hard way, a dryer and things like that, but. You, you've seen it every so often, but you know what? He was a, he's a really good educator for the kids. You know, that's the thing about it. So the young lads coming through, um, he tried his, his level best for them. And, and, you know, he wasn't just, yes, he, he, obviously the success he had with the first team is great, but, you know, he mm. knew all the kids right down to, you know, from under 13, under 14 up, and he knew, he knew wow. the parents as well. And that was... You know that was the thing about him. He was he was over in again 2017. Um, came over for, with the, the mental health awareness event that that organised. Mm. Um, you know didn't take a penny for it. He he, he got his own flight over. That, that that's typical typical of the gaffer as well. So um, I got yeah got on got on the best with him. Yeah, 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 that's quality. And and did when, at your time at, at United, did you have like kind of a a mentor, someone you looked up to, someone who sort of always give you good advice? Yeah, look, we 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 were fortunate because during that time you had so many players or big characters, and you know. Mm-hmm. But I always said if I I sometimes would stick the the nineteen ninety six ninety seven team up and um or that that squad up. And, you know, I'll go through it, that squad. And, and, you know, there weren't lads. There was nobody that was arrogant. You, you know, from mm. a social point of view, you, everybody got on. And I think that, you know, that was a big part of the success. And I suppose, the, the, you know, the gaffer helped foster that. But also the, the senior mm. players like Brucey, like Robbo, like, you know, like Kino, like NC when he was there. You know, you had all of those lads, big, big characters. They just, they just happened to be really good at what they did mm-hmm. yeah that's a that's a quality list you've got there ints as well <laughs> the names keep rolling off um, sorry. um 
So, so, uh, why, why, who, who's, uh, who was, who was, uh, the people you used to sort of get on with uh, while, you, while you was there at, um, at, uh, at United? The players' wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, look, I mean, when, when I first went over, um, I, I was in Diggs the first year, so you had the likes of Keith, Keith Gillespie was in the Diggs along with Abby Salvage. Um, we we had quite a there was quite a young group there, so it was a lot of apprentices as a first year pro, and then so there's a lad Kevin Pilkington, who was a goalkeeper, and Pilks would have been probably the best mate along with Simon Davis during that time. Mm. Um, and then you know, but what got on with with them all? Uh, obviously, Kino Kino joined a couple of years after I joined the club, and and um, mm. and got on well with Kino as well, but. The, the, there was nobody that you didn't get on with, you know. In, in all honesty, it was it was a it was a great family and, and funny. All to say, it's, it's the same with Wigan Athletic. I mean, as there are five five years at Man U and five years at Wigan, and both clubs are a great fabric to the club. It wasn't yeah. just about it wasn't just about the players. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. I think I remember uh, Kevin Pilkington coming on on pitch once in a friendly uh, and going up front. I think. I remember that game. That's um, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you went on loan to to Swansea. Um, did that really give you a taste for first team football, for regular first team football? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I went on I went on loan to the to, to Swansea, and I know people would talk about teams in the north at York, and, and, and the, the, you know how that would have affected me playing more games at Man United. But the truth of the matter was. The, my my final year, ninety six, ninety seven, things were going really mm-hmm. well, and uh, the pre season games with 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 the first team, um, and then the gaffer asked me to go and loan to Swansea. So <clears throat> when when I went to, to Swansea, so you had um, yeah, I was manager, um, and I went on loan there, but played one game, and then went in for a tackle and training with a lad, Ronnie mm-hmm. Ballwork. Ronnie was was at United at the time. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Played with him at West Brom. Yeah, yeah. And I went <laughs> in for a tackle with Ronnie. It was, you know, it was a genuine tackle. But it, it, my my knee went the opposite way. I had had two operations on it. I, I tore my, my medial mm. collapse and then my my meniscus wow. as well, my cartilage. So mm. you know, so it was only only at the end of that, towards the end of that year, then I went out and loaned the wagon when I got myself sort of half fit again mm. so yeah. you know mm. the, the Swansea one only managed to play a one game and then got badly injured so mm. that is, it, it is great to get out you know and I, but I think once I, I got that run of games with Greg and Athletic on loan initially and then when they signed me that's when you know that's when the confidence really grew you, and, 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 you, and, you, and you 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 had uh, you had five good years at, uh, at Wigan yeah yeah played I played about two hundred and fourteen odd games for them, and, and you know, the, like again, started off on loan and, and was forced enough to win the league with them on loan, um, and then went into the leagues. We had we had three years we were in the playoffs and just couldn't make yeah. that final step. I remember playing against the Edinburgh and a couple of times with Bristol. <laughs> Um, yeah, having tough, tough games with them, you know, so um, it was, we just, I think one of the years we got to the playoff final and Jillian and we were 2-1 up with, I think, seven minutes to go and they ended up losing 3-2 and um, so it was, it was difficult, but we, we had always really good players and really good teams at Wigan as well. I was going to say, what what was it about that Wigan team that, that, that kept them going up in the leagues and like you said, getting the playoffs uh, year after year? Yeah, look, I mean, you, you, first and foremost, you had, a, you had a very ambitious chairman, you know, and that's, yeah. that's the big one with, with Dave Whelan. And, and, you know, I have a lot of time for, for Mr. Whelan because, you know, he calls a spade a spade. Um, he's invested a lot of money in. Um, he, he got good players in. You know, the, the one thing I would say is as there are five years and add seven managers in my five years. So that's, <laughs> really, that's, that's a little bit the way that Mr. Wayne comes about things. Mm. If, if things aren't happening quick enough, you know, but um, the, so th- that's, that side of it, it was just, um, it, mm. was a, it was a whirlwind for the five years. You know, as I said, you know, Bruce Riach was manager for a while, with Steve Bruce was manager for a while, John Dean, mm. Ray Mathias, 
Oh, the Paul Jewell, um, I had several managers in the five years. So I think a mm. big part of it comes down to obviously Mr. Whelan and his, his hunger mm. for, you know, relentlessness for mm. some days. Pat, yeah. United offered you a two-year contract, didn't they, um, before, you, before you went to Wigan? That's right, uh, yeah. Yeah, did, did you, I mean, silly question probably, but no regrets, no regrets. Glad, no. glad you did what you did. Yeah, yeah, that, definitely no, no regrets. I think, I think at the time, um, United had offered me two years. Wigan had offered to, to buy me. I went and I sat with the gaffer and had a conversation with him. And mm -hmm. he said, look, you know, you, you did well when you were there. You know, we, we obviously are offering your deal. You know, it, it's a matter of progression. But when I sat and looked at it, I had enjoyed competitive football so much. Um, you know, and it's it's okay. Um, I, I know I could have sat and, and hopefully got another chance within the first team. But mm. because I had enjoyed playing first team football at Wigan and, and I suppose those those really good experiences so just I uh, made that choice after you know speaking to the gaffer there yeah yeah, yeah. that's good. Good. good so so you said you was uh, managed by Steve Bruce in the end uh, at Wigan was that a bit of a how did that, how did that one go yeah look it, it, it went well Bruce, Brucey came in and obviously I knew him from the time at, at, at United but um the, you know, there wasn't a matter of any preferential treatment or, you know, it, it was a matter of just trying to keep in the team because at that stage, Bruce had come in and we were trying to push for a playoff place and we managed mm -hmm. to, to do that. And then um, once once the season ended, then I think Brucey was due to actually um, take on the role, you know, as, as manager. But then I think he ended up moving to Crystal Palace at the time instead. So... Um, so it was it was difficult because again it was just a whirlwind it was only I think about eight weeks or something where Brucey was in but you know I just seen him as my manager you know once, mm -hmm. once he actually came in that, that the lines were lines were drawn and that was it yeah yeah uh, and, and what was it uh, your reasoning for, for leaving Wigan in the end after after such a good time there yeah look I mean it, it was it was a difficult it was a difficult one because my final year, Brucey had come in and Brucey had offered, he had spoken to me about a new contract because I was on my final okay. year. So yeah. um, we had verbally agreed on a, on a contract, but then obviously when he didn't, didn't take the job on and Paul Jewell came in, you know, I, I went and spoke to, to Paul about it and, and said, you know, that I'd been offered, that Brucey had been offering me a, a new deal. So... When I looked at it, it was it was a final year of my contract, and, and Paul wanted to do his own thing. He said, but I wanted to see the players first, which I understood. Mm -hmm. But I, I put myself yeah. then on the, the list straight away because I, I, what I said was I needed to look after my family and that as well. So just yeah, and his stability. Up, yeah, mm -hmm. and if anything came up, but to be fair to Paul, especially in the early stages, he, he you know he continued to play me. There was no issue that way. Um, but it was it, it came to a stage, you know, towards the end of the season when you know I more or less made that decision and I went out on loan to Scunthorpe, um, but couldn't agree terms with them, and okay. then that was where it was a matter of sort of seeing the season out and see seeing where it went. And and then sorry, go on, Nathan. No, I was just saying. So you basically, and I remember seeing videos of games when I came that like, the previous season. So you would have been there the previous season. Then I came at the last game, the last two games of that last season, wasn't it? Then it would have been yeah. Um, after yeah, that, so yeah, so, yeah. So that you, would, now I came in like pretty much. Yeah, that would that would have been right. So yeah, so I think Jimmy and that came in as well, didn't I? Jimmy um, Jazui. <clears throat> yeah, Jazui. Oh, Jizu, Jizu, so it was, the, it was maybe a year before then because he was there and I didn't never get to play with him, and I really Did wanted to, but he he's a good player. I came. Right. Yeah. Then when we got yeah. to the prem, he came and I left. So it was a nightmare. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, you, the likes of, I think I think that that year when Paul came in, you had Peter Peter Camley, Peter was there. Um, you had um, Steve McMillan, Lee McCullough. You know those those lads, Jed, Jed, yeah, yeah. Brannan. All of those lads are coming in. Jed um, Brannan. Yeah. 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 So all all really good lads as well. You know, and they. Um, so that would have been my my final season then. So you're Jason DeVos. Was Andy Lidl there when he was there? Who's that? Lidl. 
Liddell. Okay. Yeah, Andy was there. Leds was there. Yeah. Andy Liddell. Yeah, yeah quality okay. player. Leds. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so like, some of you youngsters won't know who these players are. <laughs> like, like, there's all these youngsters watching. They're like, who are these old boys <laughs> talking about? <laughs> these players, players. Sorry, yeah, carry on. Yet, like, I mean, you had Scott, Scott Green and, and Betsy like David Lee were both there as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the early stages of my career at Wigan, you had obviously Roy Carroll and then Roy moved on to the Manchester yeah. United. So, um, so we had really, really good players. Like we had, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the privilege to play with them. Yeah, I just yeah. recently spoke with Scott Green actually. So as a, I remember when he was there, I liked him as well. He's a good, uh, good fullback as well. He played fullback. Yeah. And he also played midfield at times as well, but yeah. So he yeah, really he could play. Player. He could play a combination. He could play, yeah, the yeah. right side of midfield. He could play a centre midfield, Greeny as well. But yeah, yeah, but deceptive um, pace, isn't he? He's like he, he can move it at the right times to get take you on and stuff. So he was really good. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. No, he was definitely, and he, he liked to join in. He, you know, he liked to join in whenever he, he could. So um, I've. I've spoken to Greeny a couple of times, you know, I think he's over in, in Finland or something at the minute, I think he's coaching over yeah. there, so yeah. um, you, lose, you lose touch with all these lads and then, yeah, no. you know, but the yeah, no. you, re, you mm. reconnect. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You won the Football uh, League Cup, didn't you, with, um, with Wigan, didn't you, uh, Pat? Yeah, yeah, that was sweet. It was, uh, uh, what, how did that, uh, what was that like? Well, it was yeah, it was the the, the auto auto windscreen that they, they called it like when it was. Um, so we played Millwall in the final. I uh, have to say, but it certainly it wasn't a classic to watch. Um, <laughs> but Paul Rogers, I think, scored scored in the final minute of it. You know, so um, the uh, like the, the scored in the final minute. That's that's when you want the goal to be scored. Yeah, scored. So like, and especially the, you know the old Wembley as much as the new Wembley is is amazing. You know, I think the prestige of, of the old Wembley, you know, even growing up watching the FA Cup finals and that, yeah. you know, I was privileged enough to play in it twice um, at, in, in the auto windscreen final and then um, in the playoff final against Gillingham, you know, which wasn't, it was, it was more disappointing. But, you know, that Millwall mm. side were, were a good side. You know, you Tim Cale held Stephen Reid playing in it. Stuart Navicott. Stephen Reid. Um, yeah. 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 When I was on trial there. Yeah, yeah. But you you, you scored a, a winning goal in the in the playoff in the playoff final, didn't you? No, it was it bullet was header. The, yeah, I, normally I, I just scored headers. But I ended up um, scored the goal that got promoted initially. In, yeah. that was nineteen ninety seven. And then uh-huh. I scored the last ever goal at at, um, at Springfield, which was it was just before the playoffs. So it was at the, the very last league game at, at Springfield. So those were the couple, a couple of goals that I You're scored. In the history books. <laughs> they won't yeah. forget you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. and, and you had a little brief spell at, uh, at Tramiel. Was that the same as what it was like at Scunthorpe? We just couldn't agree terms on a contract. Yeah. The, the, what, what happened at that, that, that it was Ray Mathias, who was manager, my manager at Wigan as well. Ray was, was manager at the time at Tranmere, but mm-hmm. ITV Digital, you know, it, the, the, been the collapse of ITV Digital, and they had pumped a lot oh, of was that then? clubs. Uh, so, yeah. That was then. So I wow. ended up, went up, yeah, I went there, and they were offering me, like, you know, month to month contracts. And at that stage, you know, I needed a bit more stability. My, my, you know, we were due to have our second child and, and we were talking about moving back to Ireland at that stage. So in order for me to, you know, to, to have stayed, I would have needed something more long term. And, and mm-hmm. it just it wasn't, wasn't happening. Portadown had offered me a couple of years deal and I just finished my physio degree at that stage. So, you know, I was tired of the idea of, of starting to build that business and then you know playing part-time anyway I was turning 30 at that stage you know I, I always said that we were going to be moving home probably sort of 32 33 so I just moved mm-hmm. home a couple of years earlier you know? yeah and, and 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 it was a happy return back to Porter down then yeah yeah look I mean it was it was strange because when you used to when you're used to playing football for a living you, you you don't you don't have a job you just get paid for something you love doing you know, like yeah. that's that's the thing. And all of a sudden, when I went back home, you were, there, there was an awful lot of, I suppose, plates to spin. 
and I was setting up a business, you know, where uh, yeah. we were building a house, you know, at six house moves in the, the time that I've been back home, it, mm. you know, there's been a lot of upheaval, but the port of down, you know, the, the the couple of years of port of down, we we had a strong side. Um, we finished second in, in the league both of those years. I captained the, the team for the, the part of the the, the the second year, but we just didn't didn't have enough. We it actually the final day of the season um, in in the second year of port of down, we needed to win three 0 against Benavon in order. And and Linfield to lose the game for us to, to win the league, and unfortunately we did we did our end of the bargain. We won three 0 but but Linfield beat Glentoran that day. So, um, so we we never we never made the cross the line to win the league. But I then moved on to Glentoran, and that was two thousand and four, two thousand and five, and won the league with Glentoran before I hung the boots up. So I made yeah to get it in there. Yeah. <laughs> You couldn't, you couldn't go back home from Man United and not win the league. They, they would not let you live that down, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I'm sure they must have loved having you there with all the experience that you had there. You, you was able to take what you learned over over in England uh, back over to Ireland, surely? Yeah, it's it, it's like anything. You know, the, the difficulty you have is when you go from full-time football then to part-time football. And as whenever you're, you're used to... The training hard, and you're used to you know that professionalism, and then when it's not the same, you know sometimes, especially when you're in the wind down to your career, it's quite difficult. And I was always used to being professional, and then all of a sudden it becomes a bit demoralising, which is what what I find. You know, I was I, I'm not blaming any anybody specifically. It was it was more about you know the training twice twice a week, and mm. you know actually getting up for the games. Whereas when you're playing the professional game. You know, you have to be up for every game. You're playing for points, and you're, you know, you're 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 pushing just to stay in that team. So it was it was a difficult transition, and I'm I'm not saying it's something that I find particularly easy. I have to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we had um we had Tom King on uh, a few weeks ago, and he said the same thing because he was loaned out to Welling um while he was at um a pro club. And he said it was it was because you've got a mix there. You've got like part time players, and you've got a couple of full time players. And it's 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 hard. You've got to make sure you keep that discipline, that professionalism, um, because you've got to remember you're going back to your club, and you can't get drawn into such things like that. So I can understand it must have been very hard for you. Yeah, look, I mean, it was it was it was difficult, and then you know I I finished up, I obviously won the league with with Club Tour in two thousand and five, and then. <clears throat> had a bit of a, a dispute with them over the payment of a, an operation because I, I was I was taking pain killing the Jacksons ten minutes before every game um for the last eleven games of that season we won the league with Glentorn so there's a wee bit of a dispute but not not with the club itself it's a certain individual was involved mm -hmm. with but these these things happen they're part yeah. of it but you know so then when I came out of that, I started to go into coaching and management. But the issue that you have when you go into coaching and management is you're you're not looking after yourself. You're looking after everybody else. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And, and you, you sometimes don't look after yourself, I suppose, both physically and mentally. How, how, did, you, how did you find that transition then? How did you find management and coaching? I... I enjoyed coaching and, and, and management, but you know, I, I first of all was involved with, with Newry City. I was assistant or I was I was local I was manager of my local side Lurgan Celtic initially and then I was then offered a role down south in Ireland for the Monaghan United as assistant. I went there and I have to say it was brilliant because they they had a they were part-time players with a full-time mentality, and they had, a, they had a really good attitude. So, as a coach, that was that was brilliant. You know, I, I really enjoyed coaching those lads. But then went into management with Newry City, and then poured it down after that. And unfortunately, <clears throat> when you get these jobs, you know, you're going in thinking that everything's going to be rosy in the garden, and usually a reason why you get in, get those jobs. <laughs> something's not been going right or it's been mismanaged in some way so you know so they, they were difficult you know they were they were difficult jobs and you know to, the the charity that i find it and uh, that i work with now always said if it came to a decision between 
train to be smart and you know the management the end of things if i had to make mm-hmm. a decision it was always going to be you know the charity because it's it's in my heart and i find it up. yeah so we'll just touch on the charity chain to be smart um it's 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 to help uh players of all levels and uh people with special needs and and to to gain uh, life experience sounds brilliant Can you tell us about a little bit about it yeah, so I suppose it was it was founded in two thousand and thirteen. So um, at that stage, again, it was a big transition in my life, and and I had started initially as a coaching program. And with the coaching program, it was we because I had a sort of physio background, and I, I suppose a bit of a clinical background. We were looking at sort of sports science related stuff like speed and you know endurance and technical skills and testing from that perspective but then a lot of parents started asking me about setting up teams and the one thing I, I noted when that was happening was that you know as much as you can have all those physical attributes you know if you don't love the game in the first place then you know it's it's very hard to get to the, the top of it because that's what gets you over those those dark days and those difficult days because we all mm-hmm. have them Nathan will know we, we, we have them in football of ups ups and downs um but obviously in, in 1993 you know this i've documented this before the first year i headed over to england my, my brother took his own life so that oh. was that was oh. difficult so it's, yeah, and, yeah. you know it was a very you know, a difficult time and as i said whenever i came back home um i, I came back to the funeral but the, the gaffer told me to take as much time as i needed but mm. i suppose mental health related um, issues were not as you know documented and they were more personal at that stage you know mm-hmm. the, the whole thing around the mental health the stigma starting the the left now so it was only you know in 2013 that really I, I spoke about my brother's death and that and now you know it's speak about it publicly um, mm-hmm. so what i said was you know with the charity it's to make sure that that people you know with all levels of ability get the opportunity to play a sport and, and understand what sport gives you which is you know building resilience and that whole social connection and th- mm-hmm. that, that the, the, which are much more important because the one thing i say about football and you know it, if you have a football at your foot or a football in your hand you'll make football friends you'll make friends all over the world regardless yeah. of whether you can speak their language mm. you know and that's, yeah. that's the thing about it so that's yeah. that's where it's at. We've we've had some major, you know, events. So obviously Keno was over two thousand sixteen, the gaffer was over two thousand seventeen. We now have had, formed a, a relationship with another foundation, the Harry Gregg Foundation. Um which obviously everybody knows what Harry did, not only within football but also within life. So, you know, it's 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 you know, it's going really well. It's going really well. Mm. Mm. Pat, you know, uh, do, do, do you find that players are approaching um, charities, people like yourself, more now for help or and wanting to talk? Yeah, look, I mean, th- th- what, what I would always say over this is, you know, as, as and this, this doesn't matter if it's in, you know, grassroots football or right up to elite level sport, you know, we always see the, the, the player, but don't always see the person. You know, and as much as you can see the player on the pitch, you, what their you know their life's like off the pitch as well. Mm. You know, there's a lot of dynamics mm. to that. So I think it's starting to open up more. I think there's still a lot of work can be done surrounding it, and you know that whole mm. thing surrounding mentorship and you know looking at the the mental and emotional well-being side of the game, especially for for the young young kids in particular. You know, the the the, the game is a multi-million pound industry now. You know at the the top level and with that comes major disappointments as well you know i think out of those that start out playing the game like one percent make it into professional sports you know professional football so um mm. there's a lot of disappointments and it's how you deal with those disappointments so definitely i think i think it's it's opening up more but i, I still think there's plenty to be done yeah do you do, what do you think do you think football's moving in direction with help with uh with mental health because even even just pundits and and fans uh, ourselves we we will label a player with a weak mentality and and things like that do you think do you think that, that these things help do you think that football's making a, a difference to, to help these players out 
Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's making a, a difference. Uh, the, the biggest difficulty is, you know, in in today's environment, especially with with social media and, and media generally, we know that there's a there's a huge platform out there, you know. But with that comes responsibility as well, and and young players maybe don't have that experience. I remember my first year going over, we. After we we played the 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 football side of things, and we did our training, we actually had to go over and do some media training and that. So we were stuck in front of a camera, and we had the you know with the with the pretend we're being interviewed, and you had maybe Sharpie and mm. behind you, you know, making faces as you, as you were trying to do an interview. <laughs> so, you know, so these these sides, but it, it's I suppose it's teaching. Um, and educating the younger ones in particular on you know the other side of it and, and how social media can be used for so much good, but just to be careful as well of what do you what do you put on it. So there's there's a load of load of dynamics. A load of dynamics. Yeah, to yeah. be fair, I hated it. I hated um, looking in the newspapers and looking at fans' websites, forums, because even though I, during the beginning of my career, this was even though like. Most of it was all good. This is this is that is that. But you always yeah, pinpoint compare. the bad stuff. You look at the bad one thing and you think about it all day. For no, yeah. I don't know why, but you just keep thinking about it. And then, like the next time, you're just like, you know what? I don't buy. I'm not picking up nothing to do with no internet, no fan website ever again. But you do. I'm not doing it. And then you just can't, I don't. In the end, you I'm don't not doing that because. But I at the start, my mind so much. At the start, even though you knew it, it affected you. How often did you go back still? At the start, it was every, all the time, every day. Yeah, and <laughs> until you realise this this ain't working. This isn't good for me. Why I need to not look. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it must have been a little bit more different in your day, um, Pat, than with with uh, social media. It's probably not as not as, not as as rife with regards yeah, to... Yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah that, that side of it, in terms of social media. But I remember I was actually, I was managing... New York City at the time and you know every so often the tabloids will put this these things up and maybe say you know the 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 worst signings of Alex Ferguson oh yeah and, yeah you know, all of that and then yeah you know, and I, I was actually managing this particular morning and, and the fella said to me I see you're in the paper for you you know because you were sent off against York because that's that's what it comes back to they make they make statements like that based yeah. on one one message mm. but you know the thing about it is I was probably at a. I was probably not in the best of health either physically or mentally at that stage. You know, mm. and, but imagine mm. if that was somebody in the really, really dark place. You know, yeah. and I think to have a responsibility when it comes yeah. to things like that. You know, so um, yeah. So go it, ahead. it's it's funny you say that because <laughs> press will be one of the first ones to shout out about how you've got social media trolls how. Um, social media need to look at, into this when when they are the ones that are printing these worst ever yeah. this yeah. guy's a flop um, yeah. biggest yeah. waste of money it's not it's not little 13 year old kids that are writing that those titles that are uh, headlines that are going around the world or around the UK this is this is this is the press so surely yeah, they have uh, to answer for it as well yeah yeah they do Mm, mm. Yeah, and they seem to they seem to just hide behind um, the, the the no faces on Twitter. I don't know if Pat, I don't know if Pat's finding this as well, but um, I I can relate to something that happened with my nephew um, going back a few years now, and his football career probably um, <laughs> probably finished because of it. But to cut a long story short, it, it seems to be that the kids are copying. What they're seeing on the Twitter and on and on the social media websites. So you're getting 13, 14, you know, 15 year olds, you know, who so you know, bullying, which is you know, you call it bullying by you know, typing something about them in the team. And um you know, it, it, it can ruin their it can ruin their lives, it can ruin their careers, and they need places like what Pat's done to uh, to help them. Yeah, I think I think the biggest one is is around education, you know, because the a lot of these kids are just very naive, and you know, as much as we we don't like to see bullying in any any form, you know, sometimes it's they don't even realise at times they just think they're being funny, 
you know. Mm, yeah. But mm. unfortunately, that's 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 a difficulty, and it, it, it all surrounds education because um, I, I keep going back that you know if if you have to understand there's a player, not just a player, there's a person there, and mm. I remember. Just before the gaffer came over 2017, I, I went over to Manchester and I met up with him and we had a great chat for a couple of hours. And, but he said he said about that group in 1997, he says, you know, that, that really successful group with obviously Kino and with the, the two Navels and, and uh, Eric and Ali Gunnar, all of that group, he says. But the one thing about that group, he says, they never played for the money. Um, the, the event he demanded the money. Because they were good enough, and and that's what I find even with the kids. When I'm speaking to, to some of the young kids and I ask them, "Well, why do you want to be a professional footballer?" They they'll they'll say, "Oh, because I want a big car and I want a big house, and it's nothing to do with the game." So, so. <laughs> crazy, it is crazy. No, it was never that back in the day. It was what do you want to be professional mm. footballer? Why? Because I just want to play football all day. That's <laughs> yes. what it was like back yeah. in the day. I just want to play football. Mm. You used to go out in. During the day, you used to come back when it was dark, and your mum used to go mental at you for staying out too long. Where have you been? Oh, yeah. That was yeah. it. That was it back yeah, in the day. And, and you just, as you say, you, we, we just went and we, we, we seen ourselves as, you know, Brian Robson or Kenny Dog Lace or whoever it was. Yeah. You know, you, you were just dreaming about being them. You know, that's, yeah. the, that's the way it was. Scoring at Wembley. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what I was like. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah, yeah, commentating yeah. as you're playing. <laughs> Every, everyone did that. Oh. Uh, Pat, 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 if you if you could um, go in, if you was talking to every every chairman, uh, every club in 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 the football league at this very moment, is is there something you could tell them to put into place to help the players, or is there already something in there? Um, I think or, I think there's. The, the, Various clubs would have their own ideas on things, and I think you know, but it would be very much individually related to the club. Um, you know, I, I do say it because I do a lot of work here in Northern yeah. Ireland. Between, um, you know, for for the younger kids from you know seven right through a primary school right through the secondary school and then university, and the problem is that there's there's no collaborative approach. You know, the people are doing their their own things. You know, but I think for for it to gain most impact, I think there needs to be like a collaborative approach, maybe set up within the Premier League or within you know the, the Players Football Association or something like that. You know. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's hope okay. so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Pat, thank you very much for coming on tonight. Time has absolutely flown. We've already done an hour there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great. Great to have you on. Love to have you on any time, mate. Come and speak to me mm. about Man United. Come on when uh, Northern Ireland are playing. I know their their fortunes have turned around since since mm -hmm. the old days, since it's back in the day. But yeah, um, <coughs> more than welcome to come on any time, Pat. Pat, just no, before you go, great, great to speak to you as well. Just yeah. before you go, uh, yeah. a lot of people in our comments. Uh, we, we I was was told once that you had to man mic Ian Wright. What oh, was that, what was that like? Come on, <laughs> yeah, oh, like, like, right. Ian, Ian, Ian right, right, he had come back. I think he had just come back from Celtic, and I think he went to Burnley on loan then to the end of that season. So, the, the first game that he played against, uh, or the first game, his first game for Burnley was against Wigan. So, we, we usually played with a three, so we sort of we did man mark totally, but. Whenever, like, obviously against Ian Wright, I was told that the, the man marked him. And, <laughs> and I always remember the first, I got the ball more or less straight from kickoff. And um, I got the ball out of my, my right foot. And, and Big Simon Hart, I don't know, Nathan, do you remember Big Simon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Simon was a quality footballer, but he, he didn't like the run too much. So <laughs> I got the ball out of my feet and I was ready to play it down, in, down into the right channel. And um, you know, I, I seen Simon thinking about running into the channel. <laughs> <laughs> when well, you can see someone think about running, <laughs> you know, don't pass it. <laughs> so, so as soon as as soon as I seen that, I I went and I, I feel Ian Wright chasing me down straight away. So I ended up crying and bringing the ball out the opposite side. And, <laughs> 
he, he slid past me. Then, <laughs> he's got back up, and as he's got back up, he's went, you do that again, the left and back. <laughs> <laughs> so, brilliant. But, but like, you know, it's like the, the, these are the things with the football. <laughs> and he was, yeah, like he was, he was a tough. He, he was, was always tough, giving it that. He was always a tough, uncompromising oh, character. Like, but you know what, we drew. We drained our lights and he didn't score, so that would be happy. Yeah, so you got one of them. Happy day. Yeah, the other one just 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 before I go, um, the the other one that that Nathan will know and know well is, is Jason Roberts and and I oh, had some, had some great mm. battles with Jason. Like as best set pieces, I had a mark Jason from set pieces, but I remember this particular day down at Bristol Rovers and. It was just before half time, and the, the, the free kick ready to come in, and we were just jostling. And uh, Jason looked at us, and he, he smacked me around, he smacked me around the show. <laughs> and I'm like, right, but it, it was it was just one of those things we we're just jostling. But I always remember half time, and we were coming out at half time. And Jason Robinson came over to me, and he says, "Look, sorry about doing that. I didn't mean that. I, I, I didn't mean to do it. And I just thought that that was quality from him because." You know, it was just mm. part and parcel of the game as I seen it. But he, he seems a he seems a really decent character. Like yeah, the strongest strong is an actor, but decent character. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he can lose his head a little bit, and I guess that's what he did. But yeah, he's he's always going to be a great guy and say something afterwards. So I know he wouldn't he wouldn't love to just walk off and be like, hey, yeah, served him right. For doing <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> 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 Brilliant. Uh, quality. Pat, quality yeah. having you on. Um, like Fantastic. I said, any time, mate. Thanks so uh, much. Great to speak to you. Yeah, though, yeah. Great to speak to you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, come on. Okay. Pat, man. Cool. Take care, mate. Right. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Thanks Pat. Pat. Cheers, Bye, Pat. Pat. All right. All right. Nathan, thank you very much for joining us this week. No problem. No problem. Pleasure yeah. as always. We shall yeah. see you next week. Um, Thanks, guys. Bring back, bring back some memories, did it? Bring back some memories, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few things, a few things there with the Wigan side of things. So that's a, uh, and like yeah, I, I was, yeah, Bristol Rovers as well. So yeah, it was. Uh, it's always good to kind of think about these times and uh, think about everything yeah. you went through in your career as well. So that was good. Reminiscing. Yeah. We'd have to do. We'd have to do uh, uh, Nathan Ellen, and this is your life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Episode. That'd be serious. That'd be a good one. Um, yeah. It'll take too long, though. It'll need probably a few weekends. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. You can make it happen. Um, and obviously, you've got Crystal Palace on Wednesday and you've got um, uh, uh, the Manchester Derby on the Sunday. Tough cool. ones. Yeah, well, Crystal Palace away is not never going to be easy. Um, mm -hmm. Especially with, um, you know, when we have a few players injured. It's even yeah. harder. So, um, mm -hmm. we just got to go there and... We just got to pick up the three points. Simple as that. However, we can get it, we better get it. That's all I mean. Yeah, we can't mm -hmm. afford to lose games against these guys. And then City will take care of itself. You know, we could be the team sitting back and, and hopefully get a goal. But if it's nil nil, if it's one, if, to be fair, I expect they are a machine. They, I expect them to win, mm. but um, you never know. Well, the way we're playing, if we can set up defensively and try and get them on the counter, that's the only real way I can see us really doing something but um, yeah I'd love to look forward to probably another a week of probably not the greatest football <laughs> you, know, you sound you know, down in the dumps mate <laughs> like look you're second in the league you're, you've got a, a Europa League game against uh, Milan you've got Crystal Palace on Wednesday you get a win there and then Sunday we just forget about it alright <laughs> 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 All right, thanks for coming on, Nathan. We'll see you next week, mate. Cheers, Nathan. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, take care. Take care. Take care. Cheers, mate. All right. All right. It's just down to the three of us now. There's no Guardian top 60 this week. However, however. I'm, go I'm going then. I'm going. However, wait, 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 wait. However, we do have two young championship players to watch. Oh. Jerome. Watch. Yes. Who have you got for us this week? So, so, first of all, the reason why we haven't got the Guardian Top 60 this week is because there's like no footage of the rest of the players. It's, they're so obscure, <laughs> these players. It's like there's nothing out there. Literally nothing out there. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, we'll have to throw Jerome out there when it's, uh, when it's, he can. Yeah, it's new tax year, so budget's coming in, so we'll be able to fire you out there, Jerome. Mm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I guess the young the young players are. Um, so there's a, there's a centre back for PSG um, called Sumela Koulibaly. Um, yeah, it's not now, this one. No, not that one. No, it was. There's only, uh, well, there's, only there's only one champion. There's only one sort of young young championship player. There's Jason uh, Knight from Derby. Go on, give us Jason Knight. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so this is a this is a twenty year old midfielder um, that joined Derby when he was sixteen from his lo- local team in Ireland, and he made his debut for Derby in twenty nineteen. And since then, he's he's pretty much been a like a first team regular. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, his manager now at Derby is Rooney. Wayne Rooney, yeah, yeah. Right? And in Rooney's first game uh-huh. as manager, he gave he gave this young midfielder. He gave Jason Knight the armband for the first time, which um, which obviously shows says a lot. What, what yeah, shows yeah. What him, and I guess Rooney, you know, was I guess thrown in at a young age, uh-huh. and probably thinks you know if if you're good enough, you're old enough. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give a, a twenty year old the armband. Uh-huh. In terms of how he plays, there is like a bit of Roy Keane in him. He's he's very energetic. Um, Harry's the opposition, takes up positions all, all over the pitch and is really, um, really sort of gives, gives 100%. Um, and he has al- already won a couple of caps for the Irish national team. Okay. So, yeah. Looking good, yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. And since, since Rooney's coming, he's not done a bad job at Derby as well. I mean, they're, 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 he's, he's trying to save something. They've got, got a few wins in the recent games. So, yeah. Doing, mm-hmm. doing, some, doing some good things, old Wayne Rooney, since he's, uh, in, in his time as management. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. let's get on to the transfer roundup. Boom. There we go. All right, let's go. Uh, Barcelona and PSG have rekindled their interest in Arsenal defender Hector Bellerin. Um, do you think it's time for Hector Bellerin to move on? This one keeps coming up. <clears throat> then it goes, and then it comes back, and then it goes. So I, I'm never... I'm ne- I'm ne- I'm never too sure. Um, one 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 thing, I will, one. one thing I will say is that I I think Cedric's doing a fantastic job on right and mm-hmm. left back. Yeah, 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 he is. You know, co- covering for for Kieran Tierney when he's injured and and when he plays right back, I just I don't think he's ever let us down. But but then again, he's a 27 year old, 28 year old Portuguese international who's won the European. Europa Cup, whatever you want to call it, the mm-hmm. for Portugal. So, yeah, I don't know what Jerome thinks. Let Jerome mm. think. Did you just yeah. do a, 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 a politician answer there? You didn't actually yeah. give an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone to do that, Steve. We can't yeah. have no one giving answers on here. <laughs> I, I, okay, right. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say, I'd say, yeah. I think for for him, for the for the for the club. I think we, we could get decent money for him. We've got someone to go in there. So, yeah, it's prob- it probably is. It probably right. is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with, I'll agree with Steve. I think it's, um, obviously, <sighs> Arsenal aren't having the best of seasons in the league. Mm-hmm. And part of that is down to the, the team not being good enough and certain positions need upgrading. Yeah. And I think that the right back position mm. is one that does need need freshening up for Bellerin's sake, for Arsenal's sake. Mm-hmm. Um I think, you know, the left back's pretty solid with Tierney. But mm-hmm. yeah, the right right back area could, could do with someone fresh. Now the trouble is is who they would who they would get because they're gonna have to be better than Bellerin and although Cedric's done quite well recently, they're gonna have to be an upgrade on Cedric as well. So um it would be. Um, are you going for the yeah. here and now? Or are you going for young prospect? They 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 need someone now. They need someone now, Arsenal, because they're, got, wherever, they are, they're wherever they are in the league. Yeah. And if you want to improve, you got you got to get better. So mm-hmm. yeah. Now I'm not 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 saying sign a thirty year old. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't, yeah. yeah. Who who would we who would we who would you sign? Yeah, who would you sign? <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't seen enough of Max Aaron's. I know people speak yeah, highly, but I'm. I'm. I'm not so sure. I, yeah. I don't um, know. Do you know what my, my problem with Max Aaron's is? He, he has very good attributes of a, a right back. Um, he's, he, he, 
defensively, I I I don't think he's I think he's all right. I don't think mm. Max Aaron's is as good as what people say. Um, yeah. I yeah. think he's all right. I'm not saying he's a bad player. Look, Bayern Munich don't go for Max Aaron's if he's not good. Like he's got the attributes to do yeah. well to to be yeah. uh, an attacking defender. But for me, I'm I'm not the, in the Max Aaron's camp. And and like as you said, I'm not just going to throw out Max Aaron's because that's the name that keeps on getting thrown about. Yeah. Um, mm. I I personally like the. The look of Denzel Dumfries, Denzel Dumfries, um, okay, yeah. Dutch international, uh, PSV captain, um, mm. and he's 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 a, he's a bully. He's like a he's like a not a centre back, right back, but he's a, like a, a right back who's like a defender. He's he's yeah. a, he, he can get forward, but he's like a you know he's there. He's he's mm. he, he's defender first, uh, and uh, mm. and uh, he he can get forward um, and he can work on that side, but. He's a defender first, um, mm. and I wouldn't mm. mind just having a defender first because I think Arsenal need a bit of that balance sometimes. Mm. So, no, um, yeah, you know what the way the way the way Arteta wants to play, it's a shame that Maitland Niles his head isn't in it because he could probably do a very good job for Arsenal there. But he it's, obviously it's, wants to play, he wants it, to play in midfield, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, and, and if you're if you if your heart's not in the position that you're being put in, then it's, there's no point. There's no point. Mm. Um, there's an argument. There's, there's an argument. I mean, I, I, I've always liked Ced, Cedric. I've, I've liked him for the last five years, even when he was at Southampton. So mm. I may be, may be saying this from that, uh, because when he came, I was happy. Um, but there's an argument to say for me that Cedric's better than Bellerin. Yeah, well, there's, there's, based on because, what because how he's been playing this season, yeah. Well, for, for, for me, for always, because he's, he's just... He's, he's, don't forget, he's a Portuguese international right back who's played over hundred, you know, appearances for the, for Portugal. Mm-hmm. I mean, this 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 bloke ain't he ain't no mug. Mm. Um, but there is there is Max Aaron's. I I I'm I'm not one for Mac Aaron, Max Aaron's because I mm. I just I don't want a young another young one another young right back. I want someone to come in who's 24, 25. And mm. and come in, you know. And then we got Tierney one side. You, you'd have um, say if you got Aaron's the other, and then you got Gabriel. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, I don't know. They've not even covered my age. I don't think. <laughs> <Gabriel Demola. laughs> but it's like uh, we've we've we've. Um... That's that's one thing that a lot of lot of our fan base does like to do. They just like to. Pick a, a young right back who like looks brilliant running forward, and say, "Yeah, that's the guy who should be Arsenal's mm. new right back." And when look, if you was to offer me, uh, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, who's this? Tyreek, um, the one at Br- Br- Brighton. I can't remember. Oh, Lamptey, 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 Lamptey. Lamptey. or or uh, or Max Aaron's, or you offered me uh, uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka the season that he went from Crystal Palace to Man United mm. so he was still very raw but he was the defence I would always go for for yeah. Aaron wan because yeah. he's just he's very good defensive and you can always you could have seen that from day one yes he mm. needs to work on his crossing yes going forward he needs to work but he has got pace he can cause trouble he just mm. needs to work on that finishing touch and that will mm. come with time but as I said before that, that the defensive side was is, yeah. is, is, is I think what what we've been missing because I think some of our mistakes have come from defensive. We, we're not a bad attacking team. We can attack. Um, mm. It's just, yeah, I think we make silly mistakes, positional mistakes too often. And with Bellerin, I've got no issues with Bellerin. Um, in fact, for me, it was like, uh, can we just give Bellerin a, a rest? Like, like just, just, just leave the guy alone because I felt like this was the season, if you, like the start of the season end of last season it seemed like he was kind of adapting to life without pace or life after the injury mm. where he was kind of moving his game inside a bit more mm. he was getting the channels try and get forward a bit more and, and overlap into the box but all of a sudden it's like he's lost that confidence again and yeah the the Hector Bellerin we saw for five six games this season in, in, a, in a nice patch it just went and fizzled out and I mm. can't I, I can't keep seeing that again. Five good games or five all right games, and then some really below average games. Like not 
awful, but just like even the other day, the, the just the just w- w- I can't remember what game it was. Um, it might have been the Benfica game or the game before that, but he was just he was awful against against mm. uh, Man City again. It was just like he was out of his depth, and he's an ex- mm. he's experienced Arsenal player. And he shouldn't he shouldn't be out of his depth in those games. So I think it's just time for Hector Bellerin and Arsenal to, to it move gi- on. It gives me the impression. Him. It gives me the impression that he don't want to be there. I think it's time. You know, I think it, all the stuff that's happened, it's, uh, you probably give it a chance, and it's just <clears> like you know what. It probably is time. Yeah, I'd like Ricardo. Time. I'd like Ricardo if I could. If I could pick someone out, that's or, the Leicester one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right back. Ricardo Pereira. Yeah, yeah, never, never. That's like that's, that's, that's how much money do you reckon that would cost? Mm. Well, this, this, this is what it do. It goes back to the thing like what I've always spoke about. I'm not going to go through it again, but it goes back to money again, doesn't it? You know, mm. if you want, if you're going to want, if you want to end up going for Champions Leagues, if you want to end up doing things like this, you're going to have to get money, and you need you, you need money. So, um, to ambition. get people, like, what, mate? Ambition. Yeah, yeah, ambition. That's it. Am- yeah. Ambition. If you're not going to have no ambition, you know, there's, there's like I said, there's no point moaning and groaning it week after week. You've only got to look at the team and just, you've just you've only got to shrug your shoulders and go, look. You know yeah. what, what could he do? You know it's no, you can't expect you can't expect enough. Can't expect nothing else. If but he I, could, go on, mate. No, go no, on. No, on, no. no, no all, all, all I was going to say, but I ask what I ask is where are our scouts picking up a Ricardo Pereira from Porto for or from Porto for eighteen million rather than the forty or fifty you'd have to pay for him now? Where are our scouts picking up mm. these players before they go to these clubs? Like well, that used to be us. We used to get these mm. players before mm. they went to Leicester's, before they went to a West Ham, before they yeah. went to a, a. But we're not getting them anymore. And it's not that we couldn't get them because they're going to bigger clubs. Sander Berg went to Sheffield United. Like mm. the, the, uh, uh, John McGinn went to Aston Villa in a championship. So it's not like these players aren't there. Why are Arsenal? not picking up these players before they go to these clubs and the inflation mm. of 20, 30 million on top of their price tag. Mm. Because, yeah, because Arsenal were never <coughs> really the club that went out and bought the superstar here. Every day. And if we did get the superstar, it was because he made the wrong move and we mm. gave him a chance to revive his career. But mm. other than that, we were always getting the, the unknown, the, the, the rough diamond, the gem. Oh, mm. look at this another gem that we got. Look at this gem that we got. Mm. And, and it's we've lost that we've lost that kind of it's like creativity we've lost that mm. we've lost that spark now we have to get the <coughs> but but you, you 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 know the players came in from um, Real Madrid we all know who he is mm-hmm. we we all know it's Martin Odegaard and we all know he's going to cost forty five fifty million if we want him if if they if they let him have us for that if if yeah if, if they if, let him if go. they let us out. but again like. Jerome just said ambition. If you want these players, you've got to pay money. You've got to pay not you've got to pay money now. You've got Semedo from Wolves, which was like 35 million. <clears throat> if you want Ricardo from Leicester, you've got to pay 35 million. You've got to you, you've got to put you know, you've got to put your money where your mouth is. Otherwise, because all these other clubs are paying it. Everyone else yeah. is paying it. We're, and we're not. We are the only team that is not paying it. The only Wolves one Brown spent thirty million on a on an eighteen year old hot prospect from Portugal. Yep. Fabio Silva, yeah. They went out and spent however much money on uh, Pedro Neto. They went and spent how much money on uh, Daniel uh, mm. uh, Podence. Like, yep. Yep. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand. Yet people will tell me that it's not about the money and that Stan is willing <clears> to spend. <throat> <clears throat> it's like. Yeah, but I'm but I'm but I'm fine with Arsenal now because I've I've come to terms of where we are and who we've got and where they you, you expect I, them to be. I, I so don't I, get I, angry. I, I don't get angry no more. I'm, I, I I'm don't fine. get angry no more. I don't get angry no more. I'm back uh, to the way I used to be when we used to go to Ivory and when we win, lose or draw, I was happy if we won because there's no point. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that it goes in a vicious cycle. And I was supporting this team when 
they were thirteenth in the league. It was it was bad times. Like people talk about now. <laughs> people talk about now. Arsenal back then. I was happy was though. Rough. Happy, yeah. yeah, I mean, Steve, I didn't know it. I was none the wiser about any of this rubbish. You, you mm. thought I moaned. I was just happy to see Ian Wright, Paul Merson, Lee Dixon, and these boys play and kick mm. the football around. You know what I mean? That was it. That was it. Yeah. So <coughs> when you when you see people moaning now, that this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. Mm. But yeah. Um you've entered sort of looking to bolster the squad in the summer by adding uh, Sassuolo midfielder Mario Locatelli. Oh, I'm a bit Italian there. Go on, son. <laughs> um, Everton wants to sign Norwich right back Max Ahrens. Um, Leicester are looking, uh, look, looking, look like they are leading the race for Lille midfielder Babakaru Samari. Uh, West Ham will face competition with Leicester to bring in Manchester United's Jesse Lingard. Uh, he's had a, he's had a, He's done brilliant since he's got yeah, there. I'd stay. I'd, if I, if I, yeah, if you're doing this at West Ham. Just stay. Um, David Moyes, all I'm hearing is that the, the camaraderie around the team is just the best it's ever been. So mm. um, he's doing good things there. Um, Patrick Van Arnholt has opened talks with, with an unnamed Champions League club. Uh, Bruce Dortmund are set to sign PSG centre-back uh, Sumel Koulibaly. Jerome, you had a look at this one. Oh, yeah. L- looks great. So, yes, yeah, so, oh, yes. Yeah, he, look, he looks great. He looks quality, this guy. It's Koulibaly. Um, so I think if they're going to sign him, his, they'll get him on a free because he, he's on a youth contract. That oh, compensation. Yeah, it expires in June. Um, he, he's a left-footed centre-back, one of those ones that is like proper cultured. Um, he's currently um, he's injured at the moment. He tore his cruciate ligament. Um, so I don't know when he's going to be back fit. He's he's a bit he's a bit sort of I guess like like lanky, like he's pretty tall and slim, but maybe over time he'll like fill out a bit. Um, look, watching him play his youth team games for PSG, he just seems that he's like way too good for the level he's playing at. He's like super composed on the ball and and just deals with forwards with like the minimum of fuss. Like he just like rushes Please. them off. Yeah, um, <coughs> and for seventeen, he, yeah, he, he looks he looks superb. Right, and the yeah, thing is, he'll probably like, get game time as soon as he gets to Brook Richard Dortmund as well. Yeah, probably. Mm, they'll, have yeah, average, yeah. they'll have a total age of about 100. <coughs> oh, yeah, 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 it will be. The average age will be about yeah. 21. Like, it's it's mad. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. Yeah. But but yeah. they are... They're they in are trouble, pretty... though, aren't they? They're, 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 in, they're in a lot of trouble, Dortmund. Yeah, they're, they are in a lot of trouble. And, uh, if, they don't, if they don't qualify... For the Champions League this year, which they, you know, very possibly <coughs> may not, may not stuttering, uh, stuttering. Um, yeah, you, you you could see a, a bit of a bargain basement in in the summer. Yeah, but they've certainly um, got the assets, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> All these players, yes. they won yesterday. So they've, since they got rid of the manager, they are they are picking up in form, but still they're still very stuttery, and they've got a quality team, but. As um, as Marie said last week, it looks like they could possibly have to get rid of the likes of maybe Harlan, Sancho. Uh, sorry, um, who else was there? Giovanni Reina. Um, there's quite a few players in there. Uh, yeah, I'm Bellingham sure maybe. Julian Brute would be another one. I might have to get rid of. Who was that? Bellingham, so, maybe. Yeah, Bellingham was another mm. one that they were talking about. Yeah. Getting rid of. <clears throat> but <clears throat> then you see comments from. The director of football that come out and say uh, Harlan's not going anywhere for under 150 million. Uh, obviously, Jaden Sancho, you're not going to get small money for him. But then you're kind of, I know you're trying to look out for the best interest of the club and trying to get the most money for any of these players. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to sell them on the cheap. But messages like that is it's kind of like, are we just going to back off? Are we going to go for like how much are they going to take for these players? Are they does he really looking mm-hmm. for 150 million for Harland? Or is that just fighting mm. talk? Mm. If you're well, going to pay, you need to pay big money. Because <clears throat> they are in trouble and they are going to have to sell mm. someone mm. or two. Well, Man City will go in for Haaland in the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's without any, any, any shadow of a doubt. They've got to. They've got mm-hmm. to. Yeah. They've got to. I mean, there is, there is that slight, <clears throat> you know, small chance that they might turn their attentions to 
um, Sir Harry Kane. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, from what you're hearing, from what I'm hearing at the moment, um, is that uh, Man City will be offering around about 100 million for Haaland in, in, in the summer. Are they going all out? If the, if the hundred million is turned down, is that going to be a hundred and twenty? I think they've got take to. it or leave it. I think they've got to. I think. I think. I think. I think. I I think, think I, <laughs> it's, it just sounds like we're both saying. I think they've got. To. I think they've got. To. <laughs> I, 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 I think the same because Real Madrid are going to come knocking soon. Uh, they're eventually going to be able to get get some money together. Real Madrid can't go three seasons with no money or no big signings. And they're going to have to try and stump up for one of the big boys, which is either Haaland or Mbappe. Um, so they're going to come knocking soon. And when you've got to compete with them, it's, 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 it's always a tough one. Mm-hmm. Whether, you've got, whether you're Man City or not, it's always a tough one when you've got to compete with just the, the Galacticos, just on mm-hmm. the, the history, the name, the lot. Um, yeah. So, yeah. If, have, they, have they got the money though? Have they, have they got the money? Maybe not this season, but Harlan's got a release clause next season, hasn't he? Comes in 2022, which ten, goes mm. down to like 60 million. And, and and if that's the case, then it's it's free free range. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose so, I, I suppose that's where the uh, whether Dortmund are qualify for the Champions League or not uh, yeah. will come in. Um, because yeah. Ireland, Ireland's obviously one of their biggest, biggest yeah, and he says he wants to stay as well. He says he wants to stay, which I believe. I don't yeah. think that's just talk. Um, I'm I'm sure he'd be more than happy to stay. Mm. Uh, but if again on the flip side, that if Dortmund say, "Look, we need the money for you, mate," <laughs> I'm mm. sure mate he wouldn't mind going Man City uh, because I mean his connection there with his dad. Um, yeah. So mm. yeah. Or, or, or as someone told me today that uh, Haaland um, will end up at Manchester United because um, Solskjaer is Norwegian. So there hmm. you go. So it's done. Finished. Oh, is that how it works? We don't, talk, we don't need to talk about it no more. Haaland's Norwegian. <laughs> is that how it works? <laughs> of course it is. Is, it, yeah. is that how it works? Yeah, of course. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> no more needs to be said. <laughs> but, but yeah. So I suppose there's going to be a, a drove of, of world class Spanish players coming into Arsenal now, is there? There's going to be Everton players <laughs> that grew up on Mikel Arteta. Something, something's doing my head in here. I can't think. There's going to be a domino effect in the summer between Kane and Haaland, but there's another one. I've, it's gone out my head. It, can anybody think of it? I can't think of it, but it was. No, no, I can't think. I can't think. I can't think now. Kane, Harland, the Kaku going anywhere? Uh, would he fly? He'd fly, he wouldn't go back to Manchester United. I don't think. Nah. And he wouldn't. Nah. 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 It's gonna be good. Kane, it's Kane, Harland. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Steve, uh, give us a little update. We've um, just had. Just a PSG. Give us a little update. You've got a bit of PSG information for us, haven't you? <coughs> yeah, it's unusual. A bit of PSG. Something, something different. Um, Leonardo, he's, he's had a, a, su- oh, a soothing attack on um, Nisu uh, uh, this week um, for leaving PSG. Um, he's uh, He's gone to Bayern Munich, for, for those who don't know. Um, and... Uh, for which Nizu can't pronounce it properly. Nianza has said he wants game time because um, he's just not he's not played much uh, this season. But Leonardo insists that he and many others of the youngsters at the at PSG are um, have made the wrong decision. And, and he's and he was on the French um, TV French TV. Um, literally attacking players like uh, Musa Diaby, who's, who's at Leverkusen, um, Christian Nkuku, who's at, who's at RB Leipzig, and then you got. So, so who's this player that's gone to? So, wh- who's the player that's gone to? Um... But is it Bayern Munich? You say? Yeah, yeah. Nian Tengai Nianzu, is it it? Tengai. Um, let's have pronounced it wrong 
Um, and also, he's, he's literally he's literally steamed into him. He's got into Dan Axel, Zangadon, uh, he's, he's obviously at Dortmund. Ah, uh, yes. Kingsley, yes. Kingsley Coman is at Bayern. He's, li- he's literally he's gone into a red-faced uh, attack. Um, I mean, Kingsley Coman scored the... Uh, the Champions League winning goal against against PSG, so yeah. uh, maybe, maybe you don't like him because of that. Do you do but, you think he's got a point? Do you think he's got a point? What, what? This this is what I wanted to bring up because they're all youngsters. We've we've spoken a lot about youngsters leaving countries to go to Germany to take their career on to another level. Uh-huh. Um, uh, a, another one was um, a deal. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he went to Saint-Etienne, didn't he? He went to Saint-Etienne. You know that that was a bit. Obviously, but he, again, it was a. But he's play. playing. To be fair to him, he's playing. But they mm. wanted to keep him. They did want to keep him. They had high yeah. hopes for him. But he's playing regularly for Saint-Etienne. Yeah, but please go and find it, please, because he's literally naming these players. That's why I thought we'd bring it up on the show because he's naming yeah. these players. And he's soothed, he's red faced, and he's naming these players of what yeah. they've done and they shouldn't do, and what they've done. And they're, you know, the, you know, this is uh, you know, you, this is PSG, I dare you, yeah. Go, go says, to... So, the, the problem with, with the problem is thinking there is paradise everywhere. Leonardo takes aim and Zui leaving PSG, yeah, yeah, there yeah. I see it, I see it, I see it, yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think, John? Do you think they've made the wrong decisions? Yeah. Do you, do you do you think that Leonardo has a point in in being angry that these these young players that PSG have probably spent a lot of money on uh, mm. in their development, as soon as they're going to sign a professional contract, they're leaving and going to like well not even small clubs, they're going to they're going to Bayern Munich. Mm. Ah, these these players can do, can do what they want. It's their it's their careers. Like it's the it's the it's the Nate, you know, it's it's the game, isn't it? Yeah, they haven't got they haven't got them just because they're your they they've played for you for a few years. You haven't got a monopoly on that player. Like mm. they can they can they make decisions. Like and a lot mm. of the time, a lot of time these players when they right. say, a lot of the players times these players don't ever say if if the club receives a bit of a certain amount of money, it doesn't matter yeah. what they think. They're from. So yeah, PSG, you know, they're you know, they're not exactly a hard done by club, are they? They mm. you know nah. Mm. Get back yeah. in your box. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's actually no, amazing. No, 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 no. It's an amazing, it's, it's an amazing thing. I see, I see, I see, I see, uh, I see where um, Leonardo is coming from because it's that it is. It's look, you brought up these players; they, they're potentially going to be getting to your first team, and then they go to pastures new, and even worse, they score past you in the Champions League final, the first Champions League final. You like you've been in, um, mm. but. It's sad grapes. Competitive it's, industry. It, 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 what, what I'd say here is how wrong have these players been so far? The fact that this player scored past you to win the Champions League final <laughs> tells you he made the right decision. The fact that <clears throat> this player he's talking about is playing in the, in the Bayern Munich team tells you he's making the right decision. The fact that the player, um, Abdi, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Batty or something like that, he is currently playing week in, week out at St. Etienne. Would he be playing week in, week mm-hmm. out in the middle, mm-hmm. take a variety spot? Would he be taking um, who else is in there? But it, it, I don't think that would be the case. So mm-hmm. I think they're justified in making these moves because obviously they're getting towards the first. They would know how far they are off the first team. Mm-hmm. Like you, 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 when you're in and around it, you know whether you're, you're due a turn. Mm-hmm. And they're obviously not feeling that they are. Uh, mm-hmm. They're obviously feeling that, with, with, especially with the likes of. By uh, PSG, well, talks will be uh, always transfer rumors will be going around about who they're meant to be bringing in this player, that player. And if you're a young player in that position, you're going to immediately think you're never going to get in the team. So yeah. Yeah. it's understandable. But maybe like, it's maybe it's different under Poch. Well, seems like a bit of sad grapes. Didn't it? I mean, uh, it is. I, I mean, Jerome's. You know, he's the man for the for the youth for the youth people, and he may have heard more than me, but. I'd never heard of these players at PSG, but I know them now. Mm. I, I, know, I, think, I, know I think he did say it on uh, Tangay and, and, and Zui. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. They're all top players now, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They're all top players. So they must have no And I know Jerome said that, uh, that they 
you know, they, they've done all right in the past with the future. They've got a few bob. But also what, what's come out this week is that what PSG are doing, they're, they're targeting young kids and out-of-contract players. So maybe that's there's something there that's P P Leonardo off because he has to go and do this. I mean, he's, they 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 yeah. they they're targeting Ronaldo. They they're targeting Depay. Well, and we know they're not they're not going to get Alaba. We well, know, we, we know, know that, that um, they uh, they were not out of the lurch as much as what people expected they would have been after the whole TV issue, um, which is not surprising because. Even even your, your steadiest teams with with an endless amount of money was would struggle if mm. there was a five billion euro contract going about. Uh, you had a part of that. You're offering your players extra wages here and there and everywhere, yeah. and then all of a sudden that carpet that rug gets pulled from under your feet, and you you mm. haven't got that money, and you've got to potentially think about using your own money. Like yeah. it's although they've got. <clears throat> A, a wealth of, of funds, they they yeah. can't just go. Okay, there you go. Because FFP, all sorts of things. Um, so it'd be a mess. Uh, yeah, so well, they're obviously having to think. Another and, and just the last. All those three players, they, you know, I've been told that they're after because they're out of contract. And another one is, which I, I had to smile, I had to laugh, is uh, Hilsey Dicey. You remember Hills? Remember uh, the right back in our free contract. Uh, oh, what? 11? <laughs> no, Steve, yeah. no one knows who he is. Yeah. No one. Only PSG, you did. PSG, I didn't. I haven't heard of him. That's who, who had him? I had to put yeah. him. I put Vasquez as mine right back. Huh. No one. I just think they, he was the only one there, so that's what they, everyone picked. And, and, uh. of course, Moise, and, of course, they're trying to reach an agreement at the moment. Uh, with Moise Keane. With Moise Keane, which I think mm. they do. But... Their, their main mission is to keep the players they have. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're talking to Mbappe, they're talking yeah, to Di Maria, they're, they're talking to Neymar, they're talking mm. to Jules Burnett, they're talking to Julian Draxler. I mean, will, mm. will, will they stay? Can you, I mean, I mean, look, look, I, I don't know. I mean, Julian Draxler's been, been thrown about to every team possible in, in mm. transfer rumour wise, um, and no one seems to want to take him. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, I don't know. But it, it just when you say Julian Drexler, it's like this is not 2016. It's it's it, I can't the, the name just going about. I just he's just he's just gonna. I think he'll stay. I think he'll stay if he feels that Pochettino feels that he's a part of the team I mean why wouldn't you stay um, mm -hmm. I think it would be silly for him to go um, mm. Di Maria I think he'll stay um, again quality player um, Mbappe Neymar I think Neymar will stay I don't know Mbappe maybe he will um, but if they do get them all to stay I mean that's <laughs> I mean you, you just you'd just be happy with that wouldn't you because yeah. Mbappe really looks like he could if anyone could go, it, it could be him. Um, Neymar, he, he sounds he sounds happy there. All the all the noises coming out of his camp now. Uh, we were never thinking about going. He was always going to stay. <laughs> whatever that's what they always do. But yeah, um, who knows? Who knows? But PSG have got yeah. PSG have got some ridiculous sixteen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, did you have more for me, Steve? Yeah, what do you want? There's 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 a lot of information this this, this week. Uh, Man United we've got some news on, on Paolo uh, yeah, Paolo yeah. Dybala um, and Donnarumma. Yeah, so uh, hit us up with the Donnarumma and the Paolo Dybala news. Yeah, well, Donnarumma, you know, he, he's um, in in talks with AC Milan at the moment to sign a new contract. Um, but I've been told this week there's a uh, you, know, you know they could that may not happen. Um, or it may very well happen, but uh, he, he still may leave. Um, Donnarumma, um, through a third party, has, has spoken to uh, Manchester United regards transfer uh, to Old Trafford. Um, uh, Mino Rola and uh, Donnarumma fell out over the third party agreement. Um, mm -hmm. We'll look it to the end to see what if you think that's right or wrong. Uh, of which both. Um, the, both Ole and, and the player uh, have told Viola 
to, in, <laughs> in words I was told, literally to keep his mouth shut. Um, and and it's funny because today, and I've, I've seen a little bit of news come out that Riola's sort of gone in into his little corner and sort of backing off. So, you know, I had a little wry spile because of what I was told. Mm -hmm. uh, this 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 went on to from Solskjaer saying that uh, it it was uh, the last time that he wanted his players uh, mentioned in the in in the press uh, by by Riola's quotes. And uh, by this uh, super agent, I mean, there there is, you know, there there is there has been talk. This this there is a, you know, a ploy between Riola and Donnarumma uh, to get this um, contracts he wants at AC Milan. Uh, you know, I think people are just putting that in just to, just to throw in as, as more confusion. But one one thing I can tell you is that. They have their talks, uh, uh -huh. even though it was put on our page yesterday that they had it. What two they have? Um, I didn't. I, we were speaking to Kieran in the week, and I said when it would come out, uh, it come out a little bit more quickly than it we thought, didn't it, Kieran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, but uh, you can you can certainly find that now. Uh, that is true true news. So uh -huh. I don't know if you want to just. What do you think about? Do you think? Do you think he's? Do you think that's out of order? What Donnarumma playing games to try and get a, a, a new contract? Well, going going up, going behind Riola's back. I mean, is that? Uh, a thing? Uh, do, you, do you think like this is what I mean? Like, is it a thing or are they just playing <clears throat> games? Because it, like Riola, there was the same thing with Paul Pogba and Riola in the summer. And it was like, it started off with Riola's turn around and said Paul Pogba was going to leave. He won't be signing a new contract main night. Then it was like, oh, Paul Pogba's not happy with Riola. Like, what? Like, and now the same kind of things being played with with Don Roma, except for it's a different tactic. It's I, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I, I, to me, it just seems like they're trying to get more money. If I'm yeah. honest. It just yeah. seems like they're trying to, they're <clears> letting people know that there's interest from another club and it's Man United as well so uh, it's uh, the same club that Hakan Kalilodju was linked with that that when he was trying to get more money on his contract it's just uh, is that right was that was that yeah right? yeah yeah yeah, that yeah, right? yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah Hakan Kalilodju was was wow. well was linked with Man United and I just feel like that was him trying to get more money from from AC Milan. Uh, it's what it's what everyone seems to do. Uh, there will always be a story that comes out mm -hmm. around the time of a player potentially in talks with a new contract. Yeah, but Jerome, what if, do you think if it? What do you think if they can? Would you be happy if they brought in a third party? Is that allowed? Can you do anything? I haven't got a clue. Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't doesn't say much for the relationship between the player and the agent if they had to yeah, reach no. out. They had to reach out to someone else. Um, but they do, though, don't they? They do. Um, I'm just trying to think. Well, they First have. Time I heard of it. Well, they have. I suppose. Uh, uh, Who's the third party? Could the third party be a, a family member that's acting as an agent? Like, who is the third party? This is a. Like, because if it was David Allaby, yeah, you'd say Pini Zavini, yeah, is his agent. But his dad could be the third party talking to another club. Like, yeah. so it's like, we don't know who's the third party. Is it, is it, is he speaking to another agency? Because if that's the case, then it's like, oh, then it's like, that, that, that's, that's like, Riola's going to be pushed out the, out of the way and he's going to get a new agent. <coughs> but if it's the third party is just like a, 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 a go between. Mm. Just to have a little chat, uh, it could yeah. be anyone. If it's all above board, if it's all above board, right? If if Briola came up to me and he's my agent, he says to me, "I oh, like what what are you doing? Are you, are you kidding me? Do you want me? You you're going to come in to me with United, and you're and you're going to sit down and have a cup of tea and be friends with them? <laughs> is that true? That ain't, that ain't true, 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 true. That is a fair point. That's, That's a fair point. It? Like you That's... have not got a good relationship, with Bain, like, no. <laughs> I ain't walking in that room with you. No. Yeah. So that, I've only just that's only just come to me just as we're talking. It's, it's funny when you start talking about it with someone that other thing. But yeah, I mean that. Yeah. That that would be. That uh, would make... what, 
what if Man United want Haaland? Are they gonna are they gonna get funny about the fact that it's Rayola or are they just gonna move for another player? That's probably why they want Kane. <laughs> probably, isn't it? <laughs> Do whatever you can to get Kane this year. Do it. It probably is. It probably is. I don't even know if Kane's got an agent, is he? No, I don't <laughs> don't think he has. I think it's just it's one of them. Harry Kane's just yeah, just give whatever. Oh God, hold on. It's interesting, man. It'd be it be very easy to find out who Harry Kane's agent is. Harry Kane's agent is Uber. He doesn't have one. I'm guessing it's just hold on. Oh, it is CK six six. And yeah, they right. have hey, <laughs> hey, CK six six, yeah. Joe, they have them in their books. What? Harry Kane. That's what it. just that that's it? Just Harry Kane. Oh, no wonder he's still at Spurs. Sorry, just Spurs fans, if you're still watching. Just Harry Kane. But you know what I mean though, don't you? Just, just Harry <coughs> Kane. All right. Anyway, Pablo Dybala, just quickly. Uh, we've got to feel sorry for Pablo Dybala. I mean, I don't, you know, he seems a nice enough kid, but... Seems like he's, he seems like he needs to move on, though. Um, yeah, but, but he, he doesn't he, he doesn't want to move on. For you know, That's that's what I'm getting from... Um, too comfortable? From Carlo. Um, you know, he, he's, he's had another setback um, with, with his injury. He... He was originally down for uh, coming back in, in three weeks, but uh, has been flown to Spain, uh, Barcelona to be exact, uh-huh. uh, for, for a consultation, uh, leading to possible more surgery that would put him out till August. Um, this, I mean, the, the, the big question is, will, will Juventus stand by him? Uh, as, as, they said, left as they said, as they said, they would... Uh, I'm not too sure. You might have to look that one up. Um, you know, so they said before they they said before this setback that that they would they would um, stand by him. You know, they was yeah. uh, all the good all the good words were coming out. Uh, oh, he's got you know. he left his contract. Mm. And if it's I mean, a bad injury, yeah. when you left I mean, his contract, mm. I mean, a re- I mean, a replacement could 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 be. Um, we spoke about it last week, and it's uh, a replacement could be so, mate, it's cities could be Sergio Aguero. Ah, uh, uh, yes, we, yes. We we know Ju- Juventus are interested in because yeah. we we was told that they're 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 interested in, but it's just I feel sorry for him. He just can't. He's such a skillful player. He's such a good player. Um, Is it time he, for him to move on though? I don't know. Would you? Mm. Um, it's a tough I, one. It's I don't a tough know. one. If he's comf- if he's happy in Italy, he's happy in Italy. But I mean, if they're he's looking, to, yeah, he's got a year left of his contract, and they, after two years of this Pablo de Bayer contract talks, like mm. ha- they're not really showing too much intent that they want to keep the player. For me, um, mm. when when because these contract talks have been going for ages. It seems to be we're always talking about Pablo Tobias as in contract talks with Juventus over an extension of his current deal. His current deal ends in next year. So it's getting to that mm. point. Would you would you take him, Jerome? Oh, would I take Pablo Dybala? Um I mean, What's your reservations? My reservation is where would he play? Second striker. So you'd play him instead of. So so yeah, you're playing him instead of Lacazette mm. or Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe, Smith Rowe, like number ten, yeah, behind the yeah. striker. Behind the striker. Yeah, you'd probably have him. You'd probably have him, or you, an option would be to have him and Smith Rowe in that number ten if you don't sign Odegaard in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'd have him if it mm. meant that we didn't have both Odegaard and Smith Rowe. Who would you rather have, Odegaard or Dybala? Well, Dybala's more... Um, t- to be honest more with forward. you, I, ha- I haven't seen tons of Dybala to say, yeah, I'd love him. Um, mm. But he's obviously a bit more experienced. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of Dybala, to be honest. I know he's a big name, but... Um, right, we might have to get you a, a versus versus next week. <laughs> Odegaard yeah, versus Dybala. 
That's yeah. not a bad one. Yeah, yeah, that is a good one. That is. That's a that's that's a very that's a very good one. Yeah. But yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, I, straight away, not what comes to my head is his injury record. You yeah. know, and it's just I know it's sad, but he's, he just says, I mean, when was the last time he played? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's very stop start, and I'm sure COVID wasn't have helped him as well, because that is that's that's wrecked a few footballers more than yeah. what we thought, and he had yeah. it for like nearly two months. I think he had it for. He had it really yeah. bad. Yeah. All right. Um, Tottenham are preparing a 30 million raid on Burnley goalkeeper Nick Pope. Um, and Sean Dice said they might have to sell him <laughs> for two pints of lager and a packet of crisps at this point because <laughs> they're in so much trouble. After today. After today. <laughs> after be, today. Be one pint yeah. and a packet of crisps. Um, RB Light said box Julian Nagelsmann uh, said he would be interested in a move. Uh, it's rumoured to be interested in a move uh, to Tottenham. Should they decide mm. to get rid of Jose Mourinho? That was in build. Um, Arsenal striker Alexandre Lacazette has emerged as a as a top target for Monaco. Um, cool. That'd be an interesting one. I mean, they've got the money. Oh. They've got the money. Um, Liverpool are monitoring the situation of Real Madrid. Uh, oh, Brazilian forward Rodrigo. Oof. Top player. Top player. Mm -hmm. um, Toronto's 16-year-old midfielder uh, Jaquil Marshall Ratti has caught the eye of Man City, Chelsea, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, and Juventus. Jerome, is this the next um, Alfonso Davis? <laughs> well, he has he has beaten a record previously held by Alfonso Davis. No, oh, really, not, not speed wise, not speed, not speed. So as as you mentioned, he's only sixteen. Uh -huh. um, he he's, he got called up to the full Canadian national team. And when he got called up, the record before that getting called up was held by Alfonso Davis. Um, so yeah, he beat it by like literally five days. Wow. Um, but yeah, very creative player, fantastic first touch. Um, and like a couple of his former coaches have said that he's like a proper, proper team player. He's not one of these wingers that's, it's all about him. It's yeah. like, he play, plays, for the, plays for the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. So yeah, he signed his first sort of. Uh, maybe they do it differently in sort of Canada and America, North America, where he's he signed a first team contract when he was fifteen. Mm. Um, but yeah, sixteen year old playing first team football, getting called up to the national team. Wow, yeah, no, wow. and again and again, like uh, Bayern Munich are bang on it as well. Like these these Canadian and American players. It's, yeah, and it's, you can act well. There's there's a couple of English clubs in there. You know, you know what it is obviously America had the World Cup didn't they in '94, mm -hmm. and they thought that from that point that was going to be like a big thing for like soccer, uh, football in America. And it, it didn't really take off, but now, no. yeah, in the year, it's caught up. It's like yeah, they're catching up. Like obviously yeah. they're, a, they're a monster country. Yeah, and you and they're they're obviously producing very good footballers now. Like now's the yeah. sort of time where the players mm. are coming. Through. I, th I, th I think before, previously, what the, the thing that um, American footballers had was um, they were athletic. They yeah. would run forever. They were strong. And they just had loads of determination and enthusiasm. That that was your Americans. Technique-wise, it just wasn't there. Um, mm. Even the likes of Cliff Dempsey was well-regarded in Fulham, scored goals, scored, easily had 10 goals a season when he was at Fulham each season in the Prem. Um <laughs> But it, you could see when he stepped up to go to Tottenham, it, he stood out that he wasn't quite there. But yeah. now, America's have still got the athleticism. They've mm. still got the enthusiasm, and determination and the mentality. Now they've got the technique to back it up. And yeah. you've got players like uh, Giovanni Reina in there. You've got um, Sergio Dest. You've got, you see yeah. Alfonso Davies at, at, at Bayern Munich, mm -hmm. who, that they got him straight from Canada. This is no in-between. <coughs> he went to Europe and then a couple McKinney, of years. Like, <coughs> Weston McKinney. Yeah. There's, there's so Pulisic. many now. Pulisic. Pulisic. Pulisic is a quality player. Yeah, um, yeah. They just need a, I think, a centre forward. None of them are strikers, are they? They need, I'm trying to think, yeah. any of them they strikers. They need one. No, they think they do. That seems to be their problem. Like, do you know Weston McKinney was playing up front for Juventus the other day? Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah, 
Do you know, he, he plays everywhere, that bloke. It's unbelievable. Unreal. Unreal. Oh, yeah. it, don't, it don't say a lot for Juventus. No disrespect to Winston McKinney because he's a great player. But it just shows <laughs> yeah, it shows where they're at at the moment, doesn't it? It, it, it does. It does. It does. So I just like, when, when, do you, when do you think America could challenge for the World Cup? Um, well, go on. If, if Alfonso Davis changes his nationality to American from, from <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the thing is, um, one thing they need to get, get used to is uh, they, need to, they need to build a team. They need to build the togetherness uh, and then they need to build that little bit of history. It, it's it, they need to slowly progress. They need to get to a quarter final. They need to get out of a group stage. It, these are things they need to do along the way to then know what next step they need to do. What mm. what what stopped them? What halted mm. their progression in that tournament? What halted their progression at this stage? Because mm. when they when they're at their teams and, and the individuals are all good, but when they're coming together, it's not it's not merging as as as, as well as they expected. But they're all young, mm. and they will all be growing together. With this same team for the next five, five, ten years. Um, mm. So maybe when Christian Pulisic is like 28, 29, and all the others are 26, 27, 28, maybe then they might not win it, but they might really push for a quarter final or a semi final. Uh, once this team that is young now together mm. grow together and and, uh, and and go through tournaments uh, um, as a team. And what, what, mm. once that happens, I think. I think they may get to a, a quarter final or a semi final, and then and then that will breed the next lot, which have that sort of mm. determination to try and beat that. Would you worry if you drew him in the last sixteen in the World no. Cup? I would. You wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't because I, I don't think like, like now. I, I wouldn't because I just don't think they've got. I don't think they've got that together yet. Um, mm. There's yeah, I don't, I don't think I've, I've seen America play, and they then they're not quite there, and they've got an excellent team on paper, but they've still mm. got players like I don't know if Jersey Alvarez is still in that team, but they've they've got no striker, and that's a problem. And when you've got Christian Pulisic, Giovanni Reina, Dest, and all these players, like you're like oh, and then you see Josie Alvarez in the team in the squad, and you're like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This guy couldn't couldn't hit a barn door. Like he's that's, seriously that's, he's poor. You know what? That's a bit like that's a bit like Arsenal. You say, oh, "We got him, we got him, we got him." And you go, "Oh yeah, but we got him." And then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we ain't gonna win nothing, are we? Him and him and him and him and him and him. Um, Real Madrid are ready to listen to offers for Rafael Varane. Uh, potentially, could be looking at Man United in the summer. Then um, AC Milan are interested in. Uh, Serio Immobile of Lazio, um, which is not surprising. Mm. He's an absolute predator in front of goal. Mm. Um, and according to uh, Lanks Live, Blackburn forward Adam Armstrong could leave at the right price. Jerome, how good is this Adam Armstrong? Has he got what it takes to do it in the Prem? Well, possibly. Possibly. I mean, he's he's second top goal scorer in the Championship at the moment. Only, mm-hmm. only Ivan Tony scored more than him. Um, yeah. So this so Adam Armstrong, he, I don't know if p- people might not remember, he was actually at Newcastle, who were his boyhood club, uh-huh. and very big mm-hmm. things were expected of him. Yeah. Um, between 2014 and 2018, while he was still a Newcastle player, he went on loan. He had four different loan spells, and he, he scored mm-hmm. everywhere he went. He went to like Barnsley, he scored um, a few like clubs in the Championship, and he scored goals, but never quite like fulfilled his potential at Newcastle and then Blackburn came in for him um like he played for the England youth teams um but this yeah this season is like by by far is like best season so far he's very direct tenacious really good finisher um if I I think when he was at Newcastle people were like comparing him to like Rooney like he was really that highly (laughs) why do they do that though why do they do that though it's yeah. like just relax, yeah. just relax. Yeah. But look, Newcastle have had a, a, have always had a, um, a good youth development. But it just seems like it doesn't get over the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's um, yeah. this season, like looking at his finishes, looking at the goals he scored, he looks, he looks, he looks decent. I wouldn't and, be surprised and, if he moves up a level. To be fair, yeah. And, and the two top goal scorers in in the championship are both Newcastle players. 
And, yeah. and, they, and, they, yeah. and they, they, can't, they can't score to save their lives. And Ivan Tony, I mean, he's been that kind of goal scorer. Um, that's now he's gone mm. gone through the leagues and he's done it, and it seems like that Adam Armstrong's doing the same thing now and he's mm. found his feet at Blackburn. Yeah. So you know, if if you score goals, whatever level you're at, you're going to get noticed, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And you're going to yeah. get noticed by obviously people that are above you, mm-hmm. like leagues above. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's 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 Dwight Gale at the moment? Is he is he still is he at Newcastle? Yeah, I, like, think he's, he, I think he's he, at Newcastle. He, like if he always scores. I've never known him not to score goals, but he never seems to get that big chance. I don't know why. I just, um... You know what? I think Dwight Gale's just a goal scorer. I think he's just a goal scorer. Mm. Yeah, um, I've got a blistering pace, didn't he, Dwight Gale? Yeah. yeah. And it's Pest. one of them things. That no, one, yeah. no one really... Like, it's not no one really wants to just a goal scorer, but like goal scorers now, they're like not... not frowned upon but it's like what else do you bring well I scored 30 goals a season but what, mm. what do you do around the box do you, yeah, do, you, yeah. do you bring players into the game do you drop out to the left you've got a flair mm. I just score goals I score 30 goals a season no we ain't interested and uh, <laughs> and it's just it's, it's madness if you think about yeah. it but cl- clubs want more than just a goal scorer I remember I think when, when Pep came in um, in Man City didn't fancy Sergio Aguero the geezer mm. was just Prolific goal scorer. <laughs> yeah, you don't fancy him because his game, his link up play ain't as great as someone else's, or he doesn't he doesn't pull out to the side as much, or he doesn't drop mm. off, or he's just a goal scorer. Or Sergio Aguero's got more than that, but he's a goal scorer and, and, and some yeah. some managers want more than that. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerome, you 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 like you you uh, would you because you mentioned Adam Armstrong. Um with um Ivan Tony, you said as well. Yeah. Could he come into the Premiership? And and what type of club could he play with in the Premiership? Could he? Is he like a middle? You know, an Everton or you know higher than that? Mm. Oh, it's or hard because they, they got Calvert Lewin, haven't they, Everton? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Calvert Lewin, top player. Yeah, I definitely think it. It seems as though how he's playing at the moment, he he would score goals at, at a club, Ivan Tony. Um, yeah. It just it just depends which one. Like, people, uh, there's I, I think there's a uh, how big is the gap between the championship and the premiership? Like, the defenders yeah. you're playing against in the Premier yeah. League, different to the defenders you're playing against in the in the championship. Um, it's a tough one because we've said how many times have we said this, and, and how many how many play, players have come into the Premier League from the championship and scored goals? I mean, yeah. I didn't. I don't rate. I didn't rate Bamford. Based off of what he did in the Premier League yeah. itself, he, mm. every time he went down to the Championship, he'd score goals. Comes to the Premier League, he didn't. This season, he's yeah. he's done brilliant. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the consistency, isn't it? I'm not saying mm. anyone can have a good season, mm. but you've got to do it more than I once. Think there was, I remember James Beattie at Southampton. There was one season he scored yeah. like nearly thirty yeah. goals. Couldn't yeah, stop scoring. Yeah, um, it's the consistency, isn't it, of over doing it over a long period of time. That's yeah. the that's yeah. the test. That is the real I'm, test. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like people who've come straight from the championship who've been there, like who have who, who have made their name in the championship, if you like, and then came into the Premiership and then hit the grand run in, in the Premiership, and, the, well, and nothing nothing's coming well, to me. Anyway. What, what seems to what seems to happen with some of the players who are who have played in the championship? And um, come into the Premier League and do well, they then tail off. I've seen mm. that. I've seen that, ha- that happen a fair few times. Mm. And mm. is that to do with the team more tailing off rather than just the player? Uh, because mm. we saw it with, with, with Pookie. We've seen it with Pookie twice now, where he's come to the Premier League and he's he's mm. looked like he can score goals, and then he scored goals towards mm. the end of the season. He started to drift off a bit, and it's like. Why is that? Uh, is it because Norwich have drifted mm. off, or is, or is he just yeah. not up to scratch in the Premier League? Um, yeah, I mean, Vin- Vincius is going back to Real Madrid in the summer, uh, and uh, could he? Could he? Could he go to Spurs? Is he? Is he that? Is he? Is he? Could he? Could he do something there? Could he put on a lily white shirt and win the game in the back? Yeah, Ivan Tony. Because Vin- Vin- yeah. 
Vinicius is going. He's not. He's going, isn't he? He's, he's not staying at Spurs. So. Mm. I'd, if if Ivan Tony went to Spurs, what as, as a replacement for Harry Kane or as like a backup? You know, like you know, like Vinicius. He's they brought Second him in. Like, backup, so like backup. So yeah. backup, maybe, maybe they did like. Yeah, I, I guess so. It's being second choice at Spurs is so hard because yeah. you're, you're basically never going to play mm, unless no. Kane's injured. Yeah. D- yeah. The thing is as well, the, these these strikers are a hard sell. Like, you could... Ivan Tony could be the best striker that England have had in the last 15, 20 years, yeah. But any top five, six, seven club brings in Ivan Tony, I guarantee their fans are fucking going mental. Like they're going yeah. mental. What's this? What have we fallen for? <coughs> We've gone to. We're buying championship strikers. Ivan Tony could then score thirty goals that season and shut everyone up. But we don't know because he wouldn't have even got mm. past that stage because the, the the fans would have been going mental about it. Um, if, so Arsenal, if, if, if Lacazette went and Arsenal bought him, would you be unhappy? I'd be underwhelmed. I can't lie because. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I've just said there. I'm not saying I'm not one of them fans. Look, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't berate him. I wouldn't, I'd, I'd back him 100. percent And I, I'd, you know, I'd be excited about if he was doing well. Like if he started doing well, I'd be buzzing. I'd be 100 percent a player. I'd be all over because I've, we, we've had the Ian Wright story. We've seen Jamie Vardy uh, do it. Mm. Like that would be an excellent story, mm. but he'd have to prove it pretty early doors. And because any yeah. miss. It's oh, as a championship player. Any any bad touch, oh, as a championship player. So it's mm. it's a tough one. It's a it's a yeah. tough one. Yeah, yeah. I think he should make his move pretty soon. He's twenty four now, and these yeah, he's maybe West Ham, maybe West Ham. They're they they're looking for a forward. Uh, they yeah. need a forward um, yeah. because you can't keep sticking Antonio up front. Uh, mm. So yeah, I think West Ham would be ideal. And if they was to get Europe, which they look like they're on, in um, look like it's on 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 track at the moment. So, yeah, mm. Ivan Tony, West Ham, why not? Why not? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, there should be a fair few clubs after Ivan Tony. He's, he looks like a decent player. Mm, and yeah. that is all we have for tonight. Uh, we've got D Dubs in there. Thank you very much, D Dubs. All about our, all things Arsenal. Thank you very much, um, Dangotti. Uh, I mean, there, there's, there was more news about Dangotti in the week. In I can't remember where that was, um, but yeah, I just, I just wait on that. Not, not heard anything. When, when Dangotti wants to come into Arsenal to try and buy Arsenal, you'll know, you will know, um, because I think, I think to, if I'm honest, it's what Arsenal need. <laughs> I, 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 I don't hold high hopes. Um, there's, there's a lot of talk in the, in and around the time when Arsenal were having a really, really bad patch and it looked like Mikel Arteta could potentially get the sack because of all the, the noises that were going about with regards to just unhappiness. Fans, rumours coming out about players not happy. It seemed like, oh God, it was a worry there because I don't like to see managers get the sack, especially in my team. Um, so... So, but so there was a lot of noise coming up that Cronkies, this is his project, this is his baby, this is his main thing. Once all, obviously they weren't going to spend big money when Usman off there. Fucking hell, is, is that obvious now? It didn't feel obvious. Then. <laughs> it didn't feel obvious then for like four <coughs> years, bro. Telling me obviously now. I don't tell me obviously now. Um, and then a. Uh, Arsenal once they get rid of players and they're going to be bringing in players and blah. And that, this was all done as a publicity. Like this is the reason why it was on a uh, gunner blog. There's a reason why it was in the athletic in an interview. There was a reason why that was done. It was to calm things down. But mm. I, I don't think they can calm things down if they don't make massive signings. And I'm not talking about big names because I don't care about big names. It has to be the right players. Mm. Uh, and if they don't make this has to be Arsenal's biggest summer because there's players leaving as well. There's Lacazette will be leaving. There's yeah. David Luiz that will be leaving. Uh, probably Callum Chambers. So you're losing like volume of players. 
So it's, it has to be the biggest summer that Arsenal have had in the last 20, 30 years. Otherwise, yeah. Arsenal are done for. You Arsenal are done for. That's right. Because... I, 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 I don't know if you'll agree. I don't think I don't think Steve would would agree with this, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll say it. I'll why why it me? None, why me? No, I'd say I'd say I'll say it nonetheless. It's only in terms me. of in terms of Arteta, I'm gonna not not that I'm anyone. I'm gonna judge Arteta, not now, not next October. I'm gonna judge him in the summer, and see what players he decides are good enough and aren't good enough. Because at the end of that summer transfer window. I think we, we, we'll all us three will all be able to call where this team are, where the team are going to finish, mm. and if he if he sticks with some of these players that just aren't up to it, and doesn't and doesn't get rid of some of them that need to go, doesn't freshen it up, then I then I think that's that's when I'm going to judge him. He needs to, he's, at, he's at, he'll have had a season and a half, he'll have had a couple of transfer windows, and now is the time because you can't have it where. He stays. He makes some change in the summer and middle of next season. Arsenal were tenth or eleventh because yeah, no, he he'll be decide. He'll be judged on this summer. Yeah, you're going to talk for he'll be judged in the summer. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not judging in terms of um, in the summer with regards to like so much. I'm, I'm uh, mate, mate. It's for me. It's everything. This summer's big, yes, and massive. Arsenal need to make massive changes. Uh, they need to bring in a lot of players, numbers wise as well, quality wise, to step us up. Um, and yeah, my head's going to go if if Arsenal don't make signings. Yeah, um, mm. not just with maybe Arteta, but mostly with Stan Kroenke because I've had yeah. I've had the, I've had issues with Stan Kroenke from the get go. Um, I don't want to hear no rubbish about. Rubbish. I just don't because I'll end up falling out of people because it's just nonsense. I can't hear that this guy's back in the team and mm. and I'm just not seeing it. Um, and I'm talking about properly back. I'm not talking about don't don't flash a seventy million pound player with, in front of me and tell me that oh look how is he not back in the team? He spent seventy two million on the player. No, because it need because because club like when you're serious. You ain't just spending seventy two million pounds on the player. You're buying five players worth seventy two million. Or you're buying five players worth big money. Big mm. top quality players. Um, yeah. and I've not seen that. And all I've heard is that that it's things are gonna happen, big things are gonna happen. And and that's come from the owner. And if the owner ain't backing it, it don't matter <coughs> what manager's there mm. at all, yeah. then then Jerome no, I mean, I mean, <coughs> said I might that's I, I totally agree with Jerome what he said. If, everyone's got their opinions on who and what, and why and why. I mean, this is football yeah. for God's sake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it, do, what I got to think because I say this that that's the way it is. So mm-hmm. other people should do the same. If you, you know they they ain't. This is football. You know. Yeah. You're gonna get. You're gonna get. 50 different people with yeah. uh, 50 different opinions you know you, you yeah. know it's it, it, it it's silly and yeah. so you got you got you got to break it down to the brass tacks and what Jerome says there is 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 is, is, is spot on mm-hmm. but then <clears throat> but then then there's things that um have got to happen so we can judge him yeah yeah mm-hmm. for instance okay. if, he, yeah. If, he, if he's not given the tools yeah then it don't matter if it's two years, three years, ten transfer windows. You know, mm. if he's not given the tools to go and, you know, change the team or make the team better, yeah. then what can we do? You can't judge the guy. Yeah. You can't, ju- yeah. you, can't you, you can't judge him. You've just got mm. to sit there and go, because we've all watched football for years and you know, we we we're all we we can all see what other other clubs are doing. We know mm. what they're doing. We know who they're buying. We we, we know that this what they're spending, and Arsenal yeah. are doing none of that. And and yeah. Arsenal haven't done that for twenty years. So when people say, "Oh, this plays this, that plays that, this plays that," the thing is, that's the best you're going to get at the moment yeah. because you're not going to. I w- I want improvements on every single player on that pitch. 
you know, mm. I want I, I want someone to I want everybody changed. Not sorry, no, not every, not everybody changed, but there's, there's so many different things when you look at uh, look at eleven players. You know, that's got to change. <clears throat> you know, the only person really who we've bought probably in the last five years who we can all probably say. You know, we're excited about it and it's done well. It's Ace Kieran Tierney because Gabriel hasn't done it yet. Party hasn't done it yet. We haven't, we haven't seen it. We haven't yeah. seen it yet. And mm. no one's going to tell me that they have because they haven't. They, have, they haven't done it yet. Are they quality? Can they do it? You bet your ass they can because we've mm. seen it before. <clears throat> but they haven't done it at Arsenal. And And... And that goes with a lot of other players. And you and you talk about Nicolas Pepe. It's not his fault he was bought for seventy two million. Mm. You know, he could have been bought for ten million or on a free transfer. So, uh, and, then, uh, and then what would fans be saying then? Oh, he's on a lucky free transfer. What's the uh, difference? Alaba. Yeah. What's Alaba worth? Yeah. Let's say Alaba's worth seventy two million. What well, he's going to get free transfer? So has he got a right to? You know, he's got a leeway. He's got, no matter what, he's, how good he is, he has leeway now because he's free. Can, can he play not as bad as Pepe <laughs> is because he's because he's and, a free and, transfer? And, and let's, well, let's, let's, let's give credit to Pepe now. He's, he's turned so it on now. Sorry, mate, but so this seventy-two million that everybody keeps going on about to get it because it's yeah. a load of old rubbish. Yeah, let's let's not forget that Raúl put twenty of that in his back burner as well, ten to his <laughs> mate and ten to himself. So let's take yeah. off twenty there straight away. Pepe was a forty-five million pound player, like mm. that's what he was. Like he mm. was. Um, so the, yeah, there was the far question, too many. The question, the question is: Is will he will he get the tools? Yeah, yeah will he get the tools? This is what I'm right. saying. If he's that's given, if he's given, if he's given, if he's given, if he's given two hundred million, right? Yeah. Right, and then he goes and asks it up in the next two windows. Then, oh, then, yeah. then, but, but then, Steve, I, I then, don't then, think he's got then, two then, windows. Then I don't think he's got two there. windows, Steve. I think he's got this one. I only think he's got one. But he's going to get I, the sack then. I, I get only, the sack and it's not, it's not his fault then. If that's, I, I, if that's only the think, I only think he's got one and I think he has to get all these players in this window. He has to get four or five players in this one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He has to be but, given the money, but he, hmm. I don't think we can spread... I, don't, I, can't, we, I can't go through this. Are we going to bring in players in January? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't do that again. Man, I can't. Yeah. It's too. It's too. Yeah. It's too dragging it out. It's too like. Yeah. Oh, we get here. Oh, we start stuttering around November. It's that's an old one. That's not happened in years because <laughs> we start from the start of the season now. But like, it gets to halfway through the season. It's oh, are well, we gonna? We need this. If we bring this in, we might get. I, I can't deal with that anymore, man. I just want us to have a solid summer and get in the players that we need in the summer because it's just. But where does it? But where does it start from, Kieran? It starts, it starts from, the from the owner. That's what I said. I said this is for me. It's about the owner. The owner has to back it, it because it's like they say in you. You hear a lot about uh, uh, a certain player is is gets is improved because a class player comes in. Now all mm. of a sudden that rubbishy or not as good a player now is performing to a different level because another yeah. player comes steps in. It up. Yeah, yeah. He steps it up. And yeah. let's not say he didn't have it before. We've seen it with, we've seen it with Luke Shaw. He's so, seen Tellers come in exactly. and he's stepped up his games. Now back in England squad. <clears throat> so, yeah. so, but but if he's not given, if he's given two hundred grand, sorry, two hundred million to go and get four or five players, then we then we judge him. Yeah, yeah. And, and if it, yeah. If, he, if he doesn't do it, then then we got a right to judge. I can't after. How can people say sack Mikel Arteta? It's ridiculous. I'll tell you, yeah, I agree. I, the t- I'll tell you the trouble with Arteta. Forget the forget the transfers. Is he says I want him to do well. He sa- he says all the right things, which I think is very important. He he um, he's got clear communication with the fans. But this mm. is going to be a very small example. But sometimes his decision making is like, what are you doing? So, for instance, today we're three Arsenal were three one up. There's about I don't know ten minutes to go, and he brings off Lacazette and puts a Bamiang on. Why are you putting a Bamiang on in that game? You've you've basically won the game, right? and you're putting your star strike on, who you need to be fit for, especially these European games. What are you bringing him on for? You've got Martinelli on the bench. 
give him a run out for 10 minutes. What, what is the upside of bringing Aubameyang on when you're 3-1 up with 10 minutes to go? What, what is the point of doing that? Mm. What, what is he hoping to achieve? It's, well, it's, 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 can't answer that. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ridiculous mm. substitution to make. Ridiculous. Mm. But you, the, the, only, the only thing you just you just don't know. The, the only thing you don't know about what goes on behind the scenes, do you? You know, Aubameyang might be giving him aggro. Do you know what I mean? Might be giving him meal and so so to keep a to keep a nice dressing room and to keep a happy house. He puts puts a yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that's it. I'm not Who? saying, that, but you are right. I do get you know. Other than that, but. If, yeah, you wouldn't. You know, there's no need to put him on. We've done well today. We won three one. That's it. And end of story. Um, I, I, if, I I know what you mean, but it's like 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 Steve just said. Ah, uh, he's 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 a Bamiang on his ass because like one hundred percent. You if a Bamiang's watching that game, he'd want to be on the pitch because yeah. he'd be like, well, that could have been me. And mm. now, am I going to be playing the next game because I got I got dropped? This is a big game. This isn't. Uh, this isn't uh, a Burnley or a, or a West Brom. This was a. This was Leicester. This is a serious game. Mm. Um, is is Mikel Arteta playing it the tactical way, where he's he's going to play players in certain games, or was a, a Bamian drop because he's like he's starting to sort of mm. not be able. To, seems like he might not, might not be able to handle two games so so no. close together. I mean, um, I was quite, I was quite shocked at the the team thingy today. Uh, what the side you put at? But do, do, do you know what? Do you know what gets me? And that's the thing. Do you know what gets me? <laughs> yeah? What gets me? Yeah, is um, that team? Yeah, I didn't look at the comments in the, underneath the team's starting lineups day because I just couldn't bother. No, don't yeah. do it no but more. that yeah. team would have been absolutely berated before the game. Yeah. Why is William playing? Why is he starting? Why is he there? Why is he there? A lot of that. It's a great game. When 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 William has a great, uh, good game, it's William had a good game today, yeah, nothing will be said about that. Nothing will be said about, it will be, oh yeah, but previously. Oh yeah, but this. Like, Nic- mm. Nicholas Pepe had a good game today. And Nicolas Pepe, yeah. he's won. If if anyone's going to be moaned about why they're not in the team, it'd be Nicolas Pepe because Nicolas Pepe, previous to this game, was I think four games on the trot. He's had really good games. I think mean, his first game was a bit stop start, but it was like it was on mm. the run of games where he was getting better. And since then, he's he's played really well. Come out mm. of the team, come back in today, and was I thought he was, I thought I thought mm. he was the man of the match today. I thought people, he was brilliant. people will always people would always want to bring up the negative and not the positive. We won three yeah. one today. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and instead of harping on, you know what what was good about today, mm. you just you do get people who just want to harp on about what's bad, and they literally look for something. You know, I don't. Although Pablo Mari's they not must have, they, down must, they was must awful. have their they must have their thing pulled or that. <laughs> uh, pulled pa- that Pablo bit. Mari not closing down that <laughs> ball. I didn't realize how bad it was until the commentators kept saying it, and then I yeah. watched the replay, and from yeah. the different angle, was like, yeah. "What the hell?" What's going on there? How yeah, does he not close that down? What's El Nene, where he's going oh, to as well? Jerome, Jerome, don't talk to me about it. Don't talk to me <laughs> but, about it. But, but, but then again, uh, you know, Xhaka made a mistake as well then. You know, don't he made a mistake. He should, have, he should have done a bit of ball and it was To be fair, out. Jack has got done for pace, which he doesn't have. He, he, he can't, he I can't dig him out for something he don't have. He yeah. has no pace. But, uh, after, then I thought, cool, that was bad. I mean, a lot of people were blaming this player, that player, and I was like, oh, granite. You know, I'm a fan. Of, I like you, mate. But yeah. for, for me, you you made a cock up there, pal. But then I go out. But then afterwards, yeah, yeah. he went on to had a decent game. Yeah. But you won't. I bet you any money. I didn't look at the comments like thing he said. But I guarantee you, when he did that, I get that, that you'd get all that yeah. everywhere. But they, for the rest of the game, he had a good game. You won't hear yeah. nothing. But to be fair to Jacka, he he did give the ball away, but he gave the ball away like what forty yards forty yards from goal on the on the touchline. Like well, they yeah. shouldn't score, they shouldn't score from there, should yeah. they? There's like no. yeah, so there's no, a lot no, more no. players in between there, and uh, yeah. I still go back. I did I didn't see El Nene, but again, <laughs> we having a guy again, I can't, and used to sticking up I can't, I can't. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I like, happen, I, did you? I, mate, I like Jacka. <laughs> 
I like Xhaka. I, I, I do, I do. But you, I ain't got wrong. I think Xhaka's had a good season this year. It's a piece I think, of keep, I think, look, I think, I think, I've, look, I think that... If Cam, someone Cam, says to me, do I want Grealish or Xhaka, if I want De Bruyne or Xhaka, do I thank want you. Diego or Margo or Xhaka? Do I want Fernandinho you or Xhaka? You bet your fucking arse I do. You know who I want? Yeah. Do I want Sergio <laughs> Busquets now it or Xhaka? It makes you laugh. I don't have Sergio Busquets. But, like... But, then, but if he does a good game or he plays well, he's having a I think Jack has had a good season. Play well. And, um, yeah, I think he's had a good season. He's got a couple he's, of good I think, goals. I, he's, he's I, think he's saved, I think he's saved um, old Mr. Party a couple of times in some games. But Party's, only new, to, uh, Party's only new to the league. And, and he's, 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 uh, he's still got to get up to the pace of things, conditioning. Yeah. He still gets injuries all the time because of this conditioning thing. Um, but I think I think you can see party, what party, party, is. party could have a crap in the centre circle and now but tell you something. He could have a but, good but party came on. <laughs> but party came on against Benfica. But his quality, his quality. But and, party and came on against. Is. Yeah, party came on against Benfica when we were in the dumps, two one down, and bossed that midfield. Exactly. Got the ball, spraying it, so you can see what he's got, and you can see what mm. he can bring it in the future. I mean, um, today, just today, just to finish, yeah. You know, I mean, Cedric had a good game today. David Luiz had a good game today. Odegaard had another good game today. Zachary had a good game the today. The thing with William Odegaard, he seems to be it. settling in very seamlessly with Odegaard. It's almost as if like he's setting, he's got into the team, and he's not even out of second gear yet. That's what it feels with Odegaard. I feel like mm. he's got goals to come. He's got more assists to come. He's probably got a yeah. few bit more f- sort of relaxations. <laughs> kind of when you relax, you feel free it's to easy. do a bit more skill and stuff like that. And you can see he's got that. And His I quality. You can it's see. Yeah. yeah, you can see he's not even. He's not even. Yeah, he's not out of second gear yet. So what's yeah. important with like Odegaard, Party, maybe maybe Gabriel as well. These players, firstly, they haven't had a proper. They haven't had a proper pre-season, mm. a proper mm. pre-season, or a proper pre-season with with Arsenal. Yeah, like it's hard. It's it's so hard just to go in and. Yeah, yeah. See, Gabriel, right? Uh, what I think, I mean, he's, it's, for me, he's he's not been great as what I think as what I've, some people have been saying. But you can see what he's got. You know what he's like, and I would just love someone like a Ruben Diaz or a Van Dyke next to him. Just, mm. just so he can, you know, bring out. You know, but, but just going back to the, just to the, you know, before we end, you know, he's, he's, Arteta's got to be given a, a war chest because we can never judge him otherwise. And but and if he's not going to give that war chest, then I, I can't judge. I can't. I can't judge. Hey, <laughs> then we know what's going to happen. I can't judge him. I can't judge him any any game. You know, because he's fighting a losing battle every week. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. And it was just like Emery did, just like um, Lundberg did, and just like Wenger did to the end of his career. They're just fighting a losing battle because they have not been given that money to take them to that extra thing. They're fighting with what they've got. They're having to bring in loanies. They're having to bring in their youngsters. And you, well, all the other clubs have. You know, just slapping up all the best world talent around the world. Yeah, it's um, yeah, we've just got to wait. It's a waiting game. Um, big, big summer, big summer, big summer for Arsenal. Big big summer. All right, thank you very much for everyone for joining us. We've went on for an extra <laughs> twenty minutes there. Um, not sport. to worry. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much for some top guests today in in Pat McGibbon and obviously. Our, our man um, Nathan Nathan Ellington. Um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Make sure you press the like and subscribe button, people. Need to get the algorithm going. Um, yeah, appreciate your subscriptions. It's moving up. Take care. Oh, I've got to say, I've got to say goodbye to these guys. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Steve. <laughs> You're very welcome, Kieran. Thanks All for right. joining us, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Jerome. Yeah, pleasure. Cheers, boys. Cheers. All right. Sweet. Take care, boys. Uh, Peace out. Stay safe. And wash your hands.